Warning, the opinions expressed on this particular podcast are the opinions of the hosts and the guests alone. They do not represent the army, the police, or anything else. Simply our opinions, no one else's. Thank you and enjoy before I forget. Hey, Tyree. Hey, what's up? You have a podcast, right? Yeah, I have a podcast. It's called Before I Forget. It's on every Monday and Thursday morning. Did you know about Anchor? Yeah, I know about Anchor. That's what we use to distribute our podcast. Did you know that it has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer? Yeah, I knew about all that stuff, and we use it every single time for every single show for editing right on our phone and right from our computer. Did you know you can distribute your podcast on different listening platforms? Mother f- Yeah, we knew about that. We use Anchor to distribute our podcast to Apple Music, Spotify, and tons of other different platforms everywhere across the world. Mother f- Did you know that Anchor is free? I knew it was free because if I had to pay to use stuff, I wouldn't use it. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? It's Tyree, and this is Before I Forget, a podcast by two soldiers about infantry life and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Today's episode is just me and Kevin. Uh, We remember that we haven't really told you guys enough about us. So that's what we're doing in this episode. Uh, Please like, listen, and subscribe. Check out our companion website on Facebook. uh, Also called Before I Forget. Um, Please check us out on every platform you can so we can try to grow this. Please share what you hear and uh, enjoy the show. Have a good one. Howdy. Yeah, I did the same thing I did last night. It's, uh, click to join. It brings up the app. It doesn't bring up the join the podcast and then go back to it, click it, and it brings it up. And then you tap the button. It doesn't work. So I have to close it out and then repeat the process. I wonder why it's doing that. Because it hates you. That's why. Probably what it is. That's what it is. So, hey, everybody. Welcome to Before I Forget. This is uh, just an episode with me and Kevin today. Myself you peeing out of my no no urine made myself out drink. of your out of your wing yes <laughs> right makes sense right right so I thought that or we both thought that after you know uh, we had a couple guests on you guys didn't really get to talk or you know hear it from us directly like we're the host of this fucking shit I'm sorry this damn show and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're the yeah, host yeah. of the show, and you don't really know us so much. So, we should probably really introduce each other and interview each other, almost, right? I mean, I guess, you know. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how, this, how this should work. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna do. I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess we can just do like what we've been doing, but like basically, yeah, to a little other. bit more in depth. Yeah. So. Mr. Kevin, Ooh. tell me a little bit more about your upbringing. Where where are you from? Go into whatever you want to go into with this. <sighs> you, you don't don't reveal any crazy shit that I don't want to fucking have to come and console you about. This. Oh yeah, man, I've been wanting that, man. I'm be crying okay. and, no. and and all that stuff. No, this is no, this is this isn't this isn't a therapy session. No, no, uh, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, but before we really get into it, though. Um, do you think we should take an opportunity? Um, cause we've been, you know, since we started this literally not even two weeks ago, we've had some pretty good, uh, some decent recognition, you know what I'm saying? Um, some, uh, quite a few follows and subscriptions and, uh, and, uh, but most importantly, and to me anyway, um, we've, we've, we've had a, a, a quite a few messages from people, um, about like how this has really helped them out reconnect with their friends and and uh, and remembering things that they forgot and 
you know, so on. And uh, I kind of wanted to uh, really, before we got into what we had to talk about, um, mention those people and, um, you know, uh, well, two in particular that come to mind at the moment. All right. Um, and I don't know if I'm supposed to be giving this away um, because I don't know if she even told them that she's told me, but uh, a friend of mine, Britton, um, has some friends. She's got military friends, but um, I'm, I'm saying I'm um a lot. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to multitask here. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for the screenshots that I have, and uh, you know, I'm still. Over. But uh, mm-hmm. no. So uh, the first, the first one. I'll just look at my phone. I'm looking at my laptop. I don't know where they're at in my phone. The first one, though. Um, oh man, technical difficulties. Says words for reasons, inspirational, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, Star yeah, for sure. Banner. Big ass titties. Yep. You say thick or big? Both. Yeah, big Meaty. and thick. You know what the? Yeah. Not to hate on any other kind because you know, uh, all all tits are good. Free, free, free the tatas, right? And save them, and all the other things that go along with that. Carissa. No, so um, yeah. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Kyle, Kyle is his name. Uh, yes. Apparently, he's a, a marine, Marine Corps, and um, he he likes he likes that what we're doing. He says it's kind of like they're laughs um so that's probably here man and then um another one that he had sent is uh <clears throat> where did i send it to oh the group yeah man um <clears throat> he 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 told her to tell me and i'm gonna go ahead and tell all of our uh many listeners that we've that we've acquired so far um he says if you talk the guy, you got to tell him a bunch of fucking jarheads thank him. That podcast got us telling stories we haven't talked about in years. And um, and man, like you know, like on you know, we, and we talked about this earlier, but like that wasn't even honestly, that wasn't even in, that wasn't like on our minds. You know what I'm saying? Like honestly, I don't. I mean, I, we I think we had hopes that people would listen, but I don't think that we really thought that like people would give a shit. You know what I mean? Because we had no. Yeah. We had different different meanings for it. Like we had, we just wanted to tell these stories. Maybe have like this, like uh, this is a, a a record for later on that we could use for maybe if we wanted to write about it and you know and and make it a thing. Um, and here and here we have people messaging um, other people saying, you know, that they're appreciating what we're doing and that's helping them reconnect with. Uh, with their friends. And that's pretty rad, man. I mean, yeah. And it's helping me grow as a person because normally I wouldn't give a shit, but <laughs> here we are. Would not give a fuck. Here we are yeah. caring. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, on the real, that's, that's fucking dope, man. Like, uh, if, if for whatever reason you can hop on the phone or pick up a, pick up your tablet or whatever the heck you got and, and text your friend or, or call them up and just have a conversation about the old shit that you used to. It's a fucking good, it's a good feeling. And shout out to all the blue spaders that listen to the yeah, for sure. show also. Yeah, another one that I wanted to talk about, uh, I guess, uh, I guess he's in that same circle. His name is Charlie. And apparently he said, fuck me, man. Um, I said it to O'Connell last night. Who knew some army grunts could make us feel like we can talk about some of this shit again. Um, which is honestly, man, and that's that's that is that is something that I do want to address, man. I had an uncle that went to Vietnam um, in the late '60s. I think he was there in '69, and um, man, he was messed up from it, man. Um, and he didn't talk about it. He went to the, uh, you know, he went to therapy for years. Uh, went to um, you know the VA to do all that stuff, and he he told me uh, when I came back from Iraq, he told me he's like, man, like you can do it if you want to, but all it did was just fuck me up even more. And, I, and it made me feel bad. And for the longest, I didn't want to talk about it, man. And I, I kind of felt um, nothing against my uncle, but like it kind of made me feel like I was a bit of uh, alone um, in this uh, journey, uh, you know, tra- trying to traverse the worlds of having PTSD and reacclimating um, to uh, civilian life after 
deployment, you know, and, um, and so to read stuff like that, though, I think it's, it's, it's humbling, honestly, because that wasn't one of our initial intentions, but I'm definitely glad to see that that's, that's really helping out with some of these people, man, like, you know, reconnecting and being able to talk about this stuff, man. Like, I think mm-hmm. more, I think more veterans need to talk about what it is that we did. You know, I yeah. don't care what you did over there, man. Like, I feel like, you know, you know, you, and you definitely realize this after the fact that, you know, especially when you're deployed at our level, uh, lower enlisted, but you definitely understand that like, you know, everybody has a place. Everybody is a cog in the wheel, right? Whether you're out there fighting or whether you're out there working in the mailroom, you know, everybody has a role to play and they're all just as important. Yeah. So <clears throat> Yeah, man, it is it is really cool, and um, props to these Marines for acknowledging that some Army grunts can make them feel like they can talk about this shit again. So, hey, hey, check this out. Like ten twenty years y'all. from now, yeah. ten twenty years from now, when this shit done already blown up, our fucking podcast is already huge. Twenty years. There's gonna be some guys. Yeah, it's in twenty years. Yeah. There's gonna be some guys in the Space Force. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and they're uh, going to uh, hear this shit, and they're going to be like, "Oh my god, remember yeah. that we in, in a, a foxhole special, yeah, in a in a foxhole on Mars, yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah, Just fighting off a, uh, I don't know, some other alien race that we found, yeah, whatever, <laughs> right on to them too, man. Future to yeah. y'all, peace out to you, good good luck yeah. with all that. Yeah, man, future y'all, thanks yeah, for listening, future y'all. yeah, um, motherfuckers, yeah, man. But yeah, to uh, Charlie and Kyle and all the other jarheads out there, uh, simplify and um, uh, go to the Facebook page. It's called Before I Forget and let us know what your um, favorite uh, crayon is. <laughs> um, hey, man, were you there when uh, when we were in Kuwait and we, re- we were at the DFAC? We sat at the table with some Marines and um, they had asked about my... Uh, the badge that I had on my uniform and back because we, you and I both we had our EIBs, the expert infantry badge. Mm-hmm. Were you, were you sitting with us at that time? No, but uh, go ahead. So <clears throat> they, we, you know, we were sitting there talking and they asked what it was. And for those of you listening, the expert infantry badge is um, it's a skill badge that you can get. Um, you, you know, you have to do a 12 mile ruck under three hours with a 45 pound ruck and qualify expert, uh, pass your PT test. Uh, I think at like an 80 or 85%, whatever it was at the time. And, and then you, you know, you had to complete a series of tasks for us when we did it in Kosovo in 2002, September 02. Um, it was 60, 64, 65 different tasks spread out over three days. And, if you failed a task, you had a chance to do it again. Mm-hmm. And then if you failed that one, you were done. And then if you failed that first task and then you completed it the second time, you're good to go. But if you fail another task, um, you, you got a chance to, to complete it. Um, and if you pass that time, then you're still good to go. But that was it. That's, that's the most you could fail. And I, I did that on the first day. It's we call it blade running. Like you're blade you're walking. running. Yeah, I was I was blade running. weren't you true? You were true blue, weren't you? Hell no, man! I blade ran my ass like uh, from day two on through. <laughs> yeah, blade running. Oh, some so, fucking bullshit. It was fucking range estimation. How do you fuck that up, man? Uh, well, because it's range <laughs> estimation, man. It, it actually, I'm, I'm I'm still terrible. I have no idea how I passed that fucking lane. Oh man, I had that, that on the last day too. That and I, uh, some other shit. I forget. It didn't matter. I know. I know. Go um, the two forty, uh, which is a machine gun. Uh, actually, this how did you thing. do that? Yeah, it's crazy because I was a two forty gunner at the time as well. So mm-hmm. I, I I knew that machine gun inside and out, top to bottom, everything about it, the whole manual. Thanks to uh, my my first team leader when I got over there, uh, Danny Perez. Shout out to you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Um, but uh, so whenever you're charging the handle to the rear, you're supposed to do it palm to the sky, right? Charge it to the rear, put it on safe, push the charging handle forward, and then continue on. Well, they had switched it around. They wanted me to charge it to the rear, push it forward, and then put it on safe. Well, I was always taught 
that you had to hold it to the rear before you put the, the gun on safe so that the bolt wouldn't accidentally slam forward if for whatever reason it didn't catch. Mm-hmm. And so I did what I did, and he said, you're a no-go. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, no, man, you're, you're a no-go. I was like, oh, what man. What batch protective motherfucker? Who was it? I don't know, man. That was 18, 19 years ago. Oh, man. Um, but then I no-goed. I, yeah, right? <laughs> I no-goed call for fire, right? I don't go call for fire, which I kind of knew I was going to because you know we we never really, never really did anything with that. But um, mm-hmm. I passed it the second time, so I was I was blade running on day one, and all of my the easier tasks were was my day two, and then my day three was all the hard tasks. So I had the Mark nineteen, which is a fully automatic grenade launcher, the fifty cal machine gun, which not, both of those weapon systems, we as mechanized infantry had no reason to have our hands on because we had other way cooler shit. Yeah. And then do the fucking head space and timing on the 50 cal. Yeah. Stupid. Stupid. Um, I had, we had, I had landmines that day, uh, hand grenades. And you know how, like when we, when we did the practice lanes, like the ground was dry and then they went out there and soaked it the day of. So you had to like nail your grenade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I was real crawl through that shit. Hell yeah, man! That was Came my back, last just lane. Covered with mud, like a fucking idiot. Yeah, that was my last lane, though, man. I'm mm-hmm. sitting there low crawling, and when you low crawl, you know you're supposed to keep your head, you know, completely flat on the ground. So you're supposed to basically drag your face, and then you're pulling yourself with your hands. And the guy that was uh, grading the lane was like, "Get your head lower, get your head lower." Well, it was water, man. So I was like, yeah. "If I go any lower, sorry, I'm going to be underwater." He's like, "I don't <laughs> give a fuck." Put your fucking head to the ground. So I was like, fine. So I fucking went in, dude. I had like half of my face is covered in water. So I got like one eyeball out, breathing through like the side of my fucking mouth. Mm-hmm. And uh, I crawled for like three more feet. He fucking kicks me in the head. He's like, get the fuck up. I was like, come on, Sarn. I put my head down. He's like, don't get the fuck up. I get up. I was like, yes, Sarn. He's like, no, you're good. You passed. I'm like, what? I was like, he's like, you passed. And he's like, is this your last? He's like, is this your last lane? I was like, yes, it's my last lane. He's like, you got your fucking EIB, dude. I fucking hurled my M16. I did not give a <laughs> fuck, dude. I did not oh, give man. a fuck. It's good times. Yeah. You remember who uh who signed off on our uh on our EIB, whose name is on our certificate? You remember his name? No. The Sar Major? Care. It didn't matter. Yeah, I, don't, well, I was I was good. Sar Major, was it Beam? No, it wasn't Beam. Beam. Yeah, Sar Major Beam. It was yep. Beam. Yep. Wow, you know, uh, he was a really weird looking dude, man. Rest in peace to Sergeant Major B. I think he passed away mm-hmm. not too long ago. He did. Yeah, uh, it was a motorcycle accident. Yeah, he looked exactly to me anyway like a Stamper. You remember Stamper, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's a stupid question. You remember Stamper? He looked yeah, just like Stamper, big fucking smile, and uh, we had that um, meeting in the auditorium before the deployment, and he said fucking. 60% of you guys are going to fucking die or some shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, what a fucking <clears throat> asshole. He was cool, yeah. though. I mean, it was yeah. Just... I mean, the, so the, he he grew up in Ranger Battalion. You know what I mean? So he was he was a hard ass from the get-go. You know what I'm saying? And this dude was just solid. You remember we did that, um, the battalion run? Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, dark as balls out. We're coming up the tank trail. And like... In the distance, you see something like a massive, like, bulldog on top of this rock. And it was him just repping out push-ups as, like, the battalion's running past him. He's just banging them out. But he looked like this, like, werewolf bulldog thing in the moonlight. It was crazy, man. Scary. I feel like, like that's a super Sergeant major kind of a thing to do, though. Yeah, it is. Like, it's like a prerequisite to be just a weird-ass kind of, just slightly. Yeah, out here yeah. doing push-ups in the middle of nowhere in the darkness, just so yeah. people could drive by or run by and look at him. Yep. If I was a sergeant major, that's what I would do. I feel like the 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 sergeant's major academy down in uh, El Paso. I feel like it's a uh, a couple of months on like how to do you know battalion stuff and brigade stuff, and then you know because it's a year long school, and I think maybe like the last like eight or nine or ten months is all about like how to nitpick and do things like that. <laughs> you know, like. I didn't teach. know that school was that long. Yeah, it's, it's like a year long, I think. Because it's it's a PCS move, if I'm not mistaken. They have wow. to move the whole fan bam. Well, that's pretty big. You know, you're taking over some guy. Um, at some point, you're going to be in charge of some shit. So yeah, you know, right. invest the money in some dumbass. Right, like we do for all the other ranks. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Here's a two-week school. Now you're eligible to lead troops. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> but yeah, so uh, so yeah, um, yeah. So hey, you know, didn't he have combat jumps too? Yeah, man, he had the mustard stain on his uh, on his jump wings. Yeah, that's fucking pretty solid, dude. Tower power, all that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was a ranger. I don't think he had a. I don't think he was a. I don't think he was SF special forces. No, I don't think he was. I, mean, I know he had his his, his, his ranger scroll though. Oh, okay. Right yeah. On. Either way, whatever. Right on. And I kind of want to. I honest, I kind of want to say he had a star on his CIB, but I'm not 100. percent I wouldn't doubt it. <clears throat> yeah. Right. I mean, it, dude. Dude was a a, a battalion command sergeant major in 2002. So that dude came in like you know the 80s, maybe the 70s. I have no idea. 80s, <clears throat> like early 80s. Yeah. I mean, so you know, you're, you're looking at like Panama, Grenada, Mogadishu, uh, mm-hmm. the Persian Gulf. Yeah, so it other... wouldn't be out of the. Uh, it wouldn't yeah. be out of the realistic realm that he wouldn't have one. I guess. Right. But yeah, so. Yeah. Um, thanks to those folks. Thanks to Sergeant Major Beam for scaring the shit out of me and signing off on my EIB. And uh, with your big ass face, he had a big face. God damn. He did, dude. <clears throat> dude, remember he was standing up there like talking to everybody, and he just like deep, like gravelly voice just sounded yeah. like, like I don't know, man, like like murder. Yeah, not very tall though. He would he's like five eight maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Wouldn't have towered over him, but you know. That big right. ass face is scary. Fuck. Yeah, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> especially you know to our because I mean I turned, I turned twenty in in Kosovo in '02. Uh, so, and my 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 confidence at that time was definitely a lot more than it was in high school. But fuck, man, you get around a dude like that, man. He's just been around the world, done some shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's yeah. Out Different. the window, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, out of respect, I guess. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to, you don't want to try and like flex and somebody like that. You know what I mean? Just remain yeah. humble and you know, you know especially it's fun. when you're a fucking new guy. So you still smell like a new fucking. <laughs> yeah, you man. still smell we like were... the plastic of your clothes came in. Yeah, right. We were PFCs, private first class, when we yeah. got our EIBs. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Oh man, I was a fucking uh, yeah. Yeah, PFC. I didn't get specialists until we got back to Germany and uh was he getting ready for Iraq, I, I believe. I got I got my E4, my specialist, um that November we got over uh, uh, oh two when we got back from Kosovo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um but yeah, man. So uh now that we've wasted twenty minutes of people's time uh talking about nothing. Well not nothing, but something. No, that was important. That was Shout important. out to Star Major B. Rest in peace. Oh, yeah, man. Bulldog head. <laughs> Ralph. Ralph, I think his name was. Ralph Beam. But, you know, a, a name like Ralph, dude, you you got to be a fucking mean motherfucker, dude, because people say make fun of you. Yeah. Yeah, you I know, suppose so. There's fucking Ralph over there looking all Ralphie with that big ass head of head. And he's in the gym. So, like, <laughs> you know what? Call me Ralph one more motherfucking time. Bench pressing like 7,000 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Call me Ralph one more motherfucking I swear to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So yeah, man. Uh, <clears throat> to answer your question, what was it again? From the start of this, I'd ask you. Oh yeah, you did. You asked where were you from, and and you know who do you appreciate or whatever they say. Uh, however it goes. Yeah. Well, um, East uh, Philadelphia, born and raised. Uh, what? Yeah. Sounds familiar. Uh, uh, something about the rest of my days. Um, yeah, playing I was out shooting hoops mm-hmm. and up, up to no good. And then uh, you're moving to Hollywood or something Word. like that. Okay, man. No, so I grew up in Arkansas, <laughs> man. I uh, I grew up in a small town in Arkansas, Van Buren, named after the president that was elected in 1836, Martin Van Buren. It's a fun Sweet. fact for everybody. It's good to know. Yeah. You know, just case it pops up on 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 Jeopardy and uh, rest in peace to that guy too. I can't remember his name. Trebek. I was Trebek, Trebek man. Yeah, I thought it, I thought your shit was named after Leroy uh, Van Buren from what the hell? Of course. Continue. I was gonna say, is there a Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. <laughs> but no, man. Uh, so yeah, man. Uh, from Van Buren, and 
you know, did the whole school thing. I was in athletics my whole life. Uh, basketball. I played baseball when I was a little kid. And basketball for seven, seven, eight years, and football in junior high. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I was pretty good at football, man. I was the uh, I was the punter. I was the kicker. I was a, a outside linebacker, and then I played right side tackle on offense. So I played I played the whole field. Uh, much better at defense than I was offense, but you know, seventh and eighth grade or eighth and ninth grade, I was. Six foot two and about 140 pounds, so I had no reason. I had no reason to be on the line. Damn, um, you were that tall at that age. Yeah, man, I topped out in seventh grade. I uh, fuck. Yeah, I got these pictures from uh, when I was uh, when I played basketball for the boys and girls club. And you had that penis haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was, it was, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. But like fifth grade, dude, I was uh, just below my coach's uh, shoulder, and then in sixth grade. He and I were almost eye to eye. Damn. Um, so in sixth grade, I was 5'10", 5'11". Coach was six foot tall. Um, I could touch the rim, um, the ten foot, uh, you know, ten foot basketball goal. And then seventh grade, you know, that summer, you know, I continued to grow, hit six two, and stayed there. Tallest, dorkiest looking kid had this like, like his head, like the, the penis haircut. Mm-hmm. Like and, a straight up penis. penis yeah, head. like. Yeah, well, it was the bowl cut, man. That shit was fashionable back. I bet today was like, oh, they go old penis head, Kevin. Every time yeah, they saw you. Matter of fact, we just had a my uh, twenty year reunion, and oh, um, and, uh, and they're like, oh, here's old old penis head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, it's nice that they remember those things. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, so big, tall kid, scrawny as shit, though. Um, but I was really good at football. I was really good on the defensive side. And uh, I heard a lot of people, um, like, broke a kid's foot, gave a couple concussions out, broke a leg. Um, Jesus. Yeah, man. Um, that's actually part of the reason why I did not continue to play in high school, because I got this, like, I don't know, this pacifist bone in my body where I was like, I don't want to hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. In retrospect, I wish I would have uh, continued playing, because I might have been able to to do well at it um, at other levels and it's also kind of ironic that like i quit football because i didn't want to hurt people but then i joined the army and ended up going to war to kill people <laughs> i was just thinking the same thing like yeah. man that that whole i didn't want to hurt people shit didn't work out all the way yeah what a, what a how, how the tables turn turn tables yes. how the turn tables exactly i don't know what that's from i just know it's on the internet no it's uh from the office oh yeah mm-hmm no, no, i've never TV. seen it never what seen it. Yeah, they never. Yeah, it's you not my watch damn, man. I'm sorry. I watched continue, it. continue the story. You're getting sidetracked. It's a fucking awesome show. I agree. I mean, I, I'd say you know you gotta <laughs> yeah, yeah, you right. gotta check into it. Seriously, it's a good show. I watched the first couple episodes, and I just and, and I know what people say right. You can't watch the first episodes, uh, the first couple episodes of a series, and judge it by that, man. Yeah. Like first episode of Rick and Morty, garbage. The the rest of them, crazy, mm. good shit. You know. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was a series where it's kind of like a, for me the first season was cool or whatever. It was kind of like hit or miss. The second one is when it kind of really picked up. Yeah, and then the shit with Jim and Pam. I mean, you gotta watch it. It's, fucking, it's a good show. Love story. Yeah. It's awesome. <clears throat> I do know that Jim went on to be a uh, a badass um, uh, seal, former seal turned contractor, and and. Uh, Got to work in Benghazi. Yeah, and Pam went and uh, I think she fucked uh, Will Ferrell. <clears throat> well, well, I mean, skating. ice skating. Yeah, so both are both are victories, I guess. Admirable. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I'm not a big Will Ferrell fan either, honestly, man. He's you know the what? same. He's, he's the same jerk. character in every movie. Is he? Yeah, in real he's life? an asshole. Yeah, in real life. You, you gonna put that on record? Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. I met him like once or twice. There's always like a jerk. Yeah. I mean, that is what it is, though. You know. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, who am I? I'm not shit. Yeah. Well, but you you say that you're not shit, right? But you are another human who uh, deserves kindness and respect just as anybody else does. Just because sure. he's in movies doesn't make him you know any better than anybody. No, of course not. But I'm just saying, yeah. like, I, I, if I, like I had hearing... shit to do. And some mm-hmm. guy was like, "Hi," I would probably like give him the smush face and just yeah. get him to find my way. Man, you remember that? Make. Remember that time 
uh, I called you or you, we were on the phone and I went into a gas station and I was like, hold on a second, man, I got to pay for this stuff. And I had like a little like minute and a half conversation with the, the person that worked there. You remember that that phone call? Remember that, that conversation that we had? No. Yeah, I man. Remember was, anything. Yeah. So I guess you forgot. No. Let me tell you before you completely forget. Um, you know, I walk out of the gas station and then I get back and, and you're like, what the fuck was that? I was like, what, man? Like, he's like, did you just talk to that person? I was like, yeah, dude, like, that's, that's what you do. He's like, no, that shit don't fly out here, you know, because you're out there in the, on the left coast and y'all don't talk to people. We talk to people. It's just, I'm not going to, not much more than, hey, how's it going? <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm a head nod. I want to. I don't want to have a conversation. Yeah, no the 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 southern the southern states and uh, the Midwest. You know, it's definitely a uh, a conversation is going to happen. You know that when you go into a place, you know, and if you have to interact with another human for you know any reason, there's probably going to be some type of conversation. It's always going to end in the weather, though. Almost always. Yeah, and over here it's pretty much a. Hey, how's it up? What's up? Yeah, keep it moving. All right, good. Good. Yeah. Nice to see you still made it through this COVID. Right on. Yeah. Solid. See you later, man. Now, what the fuck yeah. else we got to talk about? Maybe if we True. did stop and talk, we would have more to talk about. But I don't know. I mean, it all, it, all, it all starts with like, you know, I set my uh, uh, my stuff on the counter and the gas station attendant is like, oh, I cannot stand that drink i don't know how you drink it oh, well ma'am let me just tell you uh this is my favorite drink it has been since i was a kid she's like well i remember when i was a kid i tried it and i liked it i guess but then my taste buds i mean it's a whole conversation man like it's i would like, like just give my change <laughs> yeah get the fuck out of here. yeah right. yeah no down here man it's 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 a whole different world um, which is exactly why when I uh, was about to graduate high school, I was like, oh, fuck, I need to get out of here. It's too nice. I need to go learn how to be mean. Um, <clears throat> so, man, in school, I was never, like, academically, I was never stellar. Um, I don't think I was a dumb kid. I just didn't apply myself. I uh, apparently am ADD, um, or I was board- tested borderline when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess that means I had troubles with stuff i have no idea i I mean whatever but like i i was never really super great in school like i really liked science and i really liked history but like i was never good at like math math is still like my weakest point you asked me to do a simple math problem involving addition and i'm gonna pull out my calculator because i don't fucking know i'm gonna panic and have a nosebleed and run away i fucking hate doing math stuff but i had awesome teachers uh great teachers but you know I could get, I did not care about it. I'm in the same boat as you, man. Like, I didn't really, uh, didn't really apply myself so much. I suppose if I would have, it would have been awesome. I mean, maybe, right? Who knows what we could have been? <laughs> I remember, yeah. I remember taking the uh, SAT or the ACT, whichever one it is. You have to sit in that fucking cold ass room at those shitty ass desks for fucking three hours and answer a bunch of questions you don't have the fucking answers to mm-hmm. and run out of time. Make sure you fill the whole bubble in with your number two pencil. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I remember doing that test and just being miserable and like, oh, just get me the fuck out of here, man. That's how it was when I took the ASVAB too. It was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna circle a bunch of shit and yeah. somehow manage Average to get a decent score. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, I guess what it came down to was like, man, um, you said you wanted to be infantry, right? Can you fog up this mirror? All right, cool. <laughs> um, but I remember, I remember sitting in the. Uh, the high school in my senior year sitting in the counselor's office and um, she was talking to another student of mine, a kid that I grew up with from kindergarten. And he was always a smart dude, um, you know, definitely applied himself and, uh, and all that stuff. And I can overhear him talking. He was like, well, you did really good on your scores. You've got this score, you've got that score, um, your grades, your, you know, I think he was like a 3.9 student. Um, and, uh, and uh, she was like, you can get into pretty much whatever college you want. And I'm sitting here like, <laughs> fuck, man. This is, it's, it's April. And I graduate in May. And I don't know what in the hell I'm going to do. So my parents, um, I split parents, moms and stepmom and dad and stepdad. And, uh, and my, so my dad, my stepdad, and my stepmom all served at one point 
my my dad was in the Arkansas National Guard during Vietnam, and then my stepmom was in the Women's Army Corps um, at the end of Vietnam. Um, she was active duty stationed in Korea and then transferred to the reserves. And then my stepdad was active duty Army in the uh, early 60s, pre-Vietnam. He was in from 61 to 64. And uh, he, man... He, he just recently passed away, so uh, definitely rest in peace to Dell, man. Great dude, like definitely a great man. Like can't ex- can't say that enough, man. Like Dell was awesome, such a great man. One of my favorite stories that he would tell, though, his first duty station um, was Greenland, the country, yeah. continent, the one that's not green. Yeah, they did that shit to fuck with people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the 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 Norsemen back in the day. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I can't re- I can't remember the name of the air base, but it was um, it was an air force base up there, and it was man, I can't. It was it was pretty close to the Arctic Circle. Um, the way he remembers it, it was thirty thirty some odd miles or sixty miles something like that from the Arctic Circle. And he was a he was a a maintenance guy, um, basically what you what we'd call today like a light wheel mechanic. And his job, he was on a um, a recovery team, right? So, I mean, he would do mechanicing things as well, but he was also on a recovery team. So if a vehicle broke down out in the cold because, you know, it's a thousand degrees, you know, below zero in Kelvin, um, they would have to go out there and recover them. And he mm-hmm. would tell me stuff like, you could, you could sit there and take a piss and like your shit will freeze before it hits the ground. It was so cold. It's so cold. That if you stand outside and breathe through your your mouth or your nose, whichever it was, then like the moisture in the air can can have an effect uh, and freeze on the inside of your body or something. It was wild. Yeah. Um. So he was up there for a year, and you know, after a year, you kind of get used to it. Well, then he uh, PCSs. He changes, you know, a permanent change of station to um, Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, and he does it in the winter. And here in Arkansas, it does get pretty cold, but definitely not. Not fucking Greenland cold. Yeah. And um, he uh, reported his first day, he reported to PT, and uh, it was January or February, cold as shit outside, like below freezing, right? He's in summer PT, shorts and a t-shirt. And they're like, hey, hey there, soldier, you need to go put on your winter PTs. And he's sitting there sweating. You know what I mean? He's like, it's, it's kind of warm out here. And they're like, what do you mean it's warm out here? He's like, you need to go put your fucking winter PTs on. It's cold as balls. And he's like, nah, with all due respect, Sarn, I just, I just came from Greenland, the country. <laughs> and they're like, oh, right. Yeah, How man. did he uh, happen to get that duty station of all places? I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know how it worked back in the 60s, but uh, I guess, I mean, needs of the army. You know what I mean? I imagine. Wow. Imagine that now. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, he was in, in, you know, it could be because he was from Maine. Right. So he's used to cold winters. Um, so there could be there could have been something there. Like, you know, maybe they looked at like where he was from. and was like, you might do well up here. Yeah. But that's a whole new level of cold. That's cold winter, summers, falls, springs, yeah. all of it. Yeah. <laughs> but even even the hottest cold. Yeah. But. uh, but Yeah, man. Um, and so, that yeah, you know, so all, they all they all served in the military. At mm-hmm. some point or another, um, and then um, you know, I had my uncle went to Vietnam. My stepmom's dad, um, my my granddad. I mean, I grew up with her as my mom. I grew up with my mom as my mom, so I was lucky enough to have two moms and two dads the way mm-hmm. I saw it. And so my my stepmom's dad was also my grandpa. He was in the uh, the Army Air Corps uh, during World War II before it split off and became the Air Force, and then. He was in the Air Force in Korea. So he served in two different conflicts. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it was cool hearing, you know, growing up and hearing those stories. He'd always tell us, uh, he'd always uh, call us Doomkopf. They were German. Oh, German yeah, 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 uh-huh. yeah. Yes, so dumb heads. Yeah. yeah. Um, or, uh, uh, what would he call dumb Dumbasses, but, in, you know, Dumarsh. I don't know, you know, my German's terrible now. So, you know, I was like, well, shit, man, like that, that could be a fucking option, man. Uh, a dude that I went to school with had dropped out, got his GED and joined the army, came back from basic training, 11 Bravo uh, Infantry OSIT, one station unit training, came back and was like, bro, it is so awesome. And you get to shoot machine guns and like 
fucking like battle and stuff. It's really it's it's badass. You got to do it. I was like, dang man, cake. yeah, <laughs> there is cake, y'all. In two thousand one basic training, there was cake. I couldn't eat it, but it was there. No, it was there. <laughs> I, I man, I, I had to do KP for a week, and I remember, I remember having to throw all that shit away in the trash can. And I'm, you know, you're so hungry in basic, man, because the calories they feed you does not match the calories you're you're burning. Yeah, and, no, uh, I did that shit. I scooped that shit up, man. I ate it. <clears throat> I did too. I am not proud of that, but I've eaten cake out of a trash can. Out of the trash can? Hell no, man. I mean, like they had leftover cake from the shit. I mean, from the yeah, we had to uh, throw it all I, away. We had to throw it away, but while I'm walking into the trash can, I'm fucking massive handfuls and shoving it into my face, palm first. <laughs> yeah, no, man. So, so you know, like I'm doing the right thing, right? I'm having uh, integrity, and I'm throwing it in the trash can, and then like I'm throwing it in more in the trash can. There was like there was like so much dessert. And I'm throwing it all in the trash can, and I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> it's right there. Was it the chocolate cake? You know, that was the best one. Huh? Chocolate cake with a chocolate frosting. No, it was a uh, vanilla something, brother. No, oh, that's the bullshit. <clears throat> it, it, I mean, it really wasn't. Honestly, it wasn't all that good. Um, I'm not a big cake fan anyway. I mean, I like uh, red velvet, but you know. Um, but anyway, you know. So I talked to my parents and I said I wanted to be in the reserves and I wanted to join the infantry. So mm-hmm. I go talk to the recruiter, and. Um, <clears throat> You know, talking to the recruiters, they're like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, man, we can get we can get you in the infantry, we can get you in for three years." But listen, you you can't go in the reserves. We don't have infantry in the reserves. You have to go active duty if you want to be infantry. I was like, "Well, dang, man!" And uh, they didn't say a damn thing about the National Guard. You know, because <laughs> the National you know there National Guard, you know, they have infantry, but it's a different office. They don't work out of the same office as the active duty and Army Reserve recruiters. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, I mean, we could totally do that, bro. But you have to go active duty, man. So I did the ASVAB. I went down to MEPS, you know. And for those of you that don't know uh, what MEPS is, I can't remember what MEPS stands for. Military Entry PS. I don't know. Um, Postal Service. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Prostate Processing S- System. Military S- Pro. S- Whatever. S- Who cares? It's service. not important. It's really not. Uh, which, which, for those of you who are uh, considering joining, uh, what is important about going to MEPS is make sure you do not wear underwear. Make sure you go commando, and make sure you know that your asshole will get looked at by a guy who is guaranteed to be at least ninety-five years old. Oh yeah, he's been doing it since eighty-seven, at least yeah. eighteen eighty-seven. <laughs> he's seen all the assholes, every size, every shape. Nothing's <laughs> going to surprise him. Yeah, for the most yeah, part. Yeah. <clears throat> no, uh, so my my recruiter was like, "Dude, do, uh, do you wear do you wear underwear?" I was like, "Yes." He's like, "Make sure you wear boxers when you go down there." I was like, "Okay." So I went and bought a package of boxers, um, mm-hmm. and uh, went down there. And glad glad that he gave me that recommendation because so they take like forty or fifty of you, put you in a room, space you out, or whatever the number was. You're stripped down to your underwear so that they can observe your basically naked body looking for any identifying marks, tattoos, scars, so on and so on. And then you have to do a series of uh, physical assessments. And um, some of them are pretty awkward if you're not wearing the appropriate undergarments. Um, yeah. Like the, the duck, duck walk. walk. Yeah, the duck walk. Yeah. <laughs> um, the duck walk, for those of you that don't know, you just squat down and then you walk. So yeah. you're basically flat foot on the ground but you're 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 all the way down like you're sat all the way down but your butt's not on the ground and you just walk and you're good and plenty just out there hanging in the streets yeah man yeah you definitely want to make sure you're uh you're not <clears throat> dragon yeah hey man you like dragons no oh, too bad but uh <laughs> <laughs> you know everybody i talk to has got a story about going to maps right mm-hmm. it's always some old dude always some old dude every time yeah, I had to go through MEPS twice. It was an old dude for me, too. He had to have been like, uh, I say old, maybe about 48, 49, yeah. believe it or not, trying to go back in. He couldn't do any, any any of the physical stuff. Like, I have no clue why he was there. It was like my second time, like I said, going through, and I'm like, man, it's, oh, man, you're wasting these people's time. <laughs> um, what was, uh, you said you went through twice. Yes. 
Because I got out completely. You know, the first time I went through in L.A. And then when you get out completely and all your contracts are done, you have to go back through again if you enlist. Because it wasn't a re-enlistment. It was was an enlistment the second time I went through. Right. Yeah, Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was cool. It was funny because a lot of the kids, you know, of course, there's the one or two old folks, like you said, but there's kids in there. They're nervous as shit. They're thinking, you know, fucking go time. But, you know, it's just maps. They, they don't know no better. So these people are kind of like bossing around a little bit. They're being cool, but they're kind of bossing these fucking new people around. And I'm just kind of sitting there watching them like, man, these guys, young kids, man, they don't have any clue what they're in for. Youngins. Yeah. My, uh, the guy that I had to go to looked like, uh, that the old scientist guy from, uh, Futurama, uh, Professor, uh, Farnsworth. Yeah. I swear to God, that's what he looked like, man. <laughs> uh, liver spots and all. I mean, that dude's probably still alive, though, and I went through 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so they, they definitely do that. It's, it's, it's supposed to be a visual inspection, but I've heard of some other people getting a little bit more than that. I did. I did talk to one guy who said that he had a, a female doctor who was probably in her uh, late twenties, early thirties. Get out of here! Yeah, yeah. I don't know which one. I don't know which one would would be would be more comfortable. You know, especially me at that age. Oh man, I was, I'm definitely going for the female. I'm not gonna have some... <laughs> old dude. What? Well, I mean, dude. Like, if I had to pick, I mean, well, sure, right. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, well, at the time though, man, like I was, uh, the, some, some folks might be surprised to hear this, but I was still a virgin, man. Like I did not, I did not play around with that. Right. Well, before you got in the army. Yeah. I, same. I Yeah. Same. Um, after basic training, man. Yeah. 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 Same. I didn't, I didn't see a vagina until I was in fucking uh, Germany. So there you go. Well, well, I mean, you know, like for other purposes, you know, whatever. <laughs> Other purposes. <laughs> well, what what are they? What fisting? No. So continue yeah, with your straight story. into it, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> straight into it. No, man. Yeah. So you know, I, you know, I'm at Meps, and I, you, know, you go through the whole process, and like, okay, everything is good to go. I did, you know, and and you're, you're you're talking to the person who's got your contract, right? And they're like, okay, so here's here's what we can do, man. And they're they're salesmen, right? They're salesmen as fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, they tried they tried to push all these other MOSs, but I was stuck on being infantry, and so you know. They're like, okay, all right, man. So here's the deal. Um, my buddy that I was talking about earlier, he got stationed in Germany, and I was like, man, that sounds pretty bad. I want to be stationed in Germany. So I told him, I was like, is there any way that if, if if I go active duty that I can be stationed in Germany? And it just so happened at this point in time in 2001, you could get a guaranteed duty station of choice. Yep. And um, and so that Germany wasn't. You couldn't pick Germany specifically. You could pick Europe. But in Europe, for the Army, for infantry, it was only Germany or Italy. And you weren't going to Italy if you didn't go airborne. And I had, I had no uh, problems with that. I never wanted to be airborne. Never wanted to jump out of a fucking airplane, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I feel like a perfectly fine plane. Yeah, like, this shit lands, right? I'll get off then. <laughs> with some fabric holding you up. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. So... That so the, the guy's like yeah man so i can get you i can get you europe you know since you're not going to go airborne you're more than likely going to go to germany all right so, so don't worry about that and i can get you i can get you three years in the infantry um and he's like well, hang on a second looking at his computer well wouldn't you know it man there's a, there's a bonus attached to that man i can get you uh i can get you that three years in germany with for a ten thousand uh, dollar enlistment bonus I was like, well, dang, man, that's fucking cool, man. I've, you know, in previous, you know, prior to this, my jobs, I, my first job was Taco fucking Bell. And then I worked at a, a grocery store. I worked at Western Sizzlin, a buffet restaurant. And then I worked the job that I was doing before I joined the army. I was a telemarketer, a telemarketer. Wow. You know, so all dead end jobs making shit for money. So 10 grand was like, yeah, oh. don't fucking pay me, dude. Yeah. And uh, he's like, yeah, dude, we can totally do that. My eyes got all big. He's like, hell yeah, this dude's eating it up. You know what I mean? Breathing all so, hard shit. Yeah, man, like sweating, nipples hard, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the whole nine. And, For 10 uh, grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? For 10 grand. Well, no, it gets better. Because he's like, he's like, wait a second, wait a second. I got a phone call earlier. Let me double check something. He goes over, slides his chair over the other end of the desk, grabs up his phone. He's like, he's like dude, give me one second, okay? 
Hey, man. Dramatic. Yeah, it, it was a show, dude. It was a full on fucking show. Like this dude, like read some book about how to be a salesman or something, mm-hmm. and uh, or maybe he bought the tape. I don't know. Hey, man. Hey, remember that thing you were talking about earlier about the uh, uh, you know three years for ten, but like if they do another, uh huh. How much? Okay, okay. Oh, what? and it's even Say, it's what? it's even more for what? Oh shit! All right, all right. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Thanks. Appreciate you. Hangs up the phone, comes back. It's like check it out, man. Check it out. Check you it out. won't yeah. believe this shit. I got some numbers for you, buddy. You ain't gonna believe it, right? <laughs> He's like, I can get you that three for ten, guaranteed duty sa- guaranteed duty station. It's like if you do an additional year, I can get you seventeen thousand dollars. I was like, damn, you almost doubled my money for doing another three sixty five. And all it took was one phone call that just happened to have happen right now. Fuck. Yeah, right. <laughs> L- lucky old me in it when the stars align. And uh, he says to me, he says, now, it, now, you know, hear me out. How does $20,000 sound? I'm like, well, that's $3,000 more than the 17 <laughs> you just said. How the fuck do I get that? He's like, you got to do six years. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. I'm good on that, man. Like, mm-hmm. listen, you give me seven grand for one more year. Plus another three for two more years. No, I suck my balls. I'll do the four. Yeah, <clears throat> you had me from the start, man. You're just trying to butter me up some more and fucking up the deal. Yeah, yeah. you should have just left out. If he had left out the four for seventeen and just told me about the six for twenty, I might have done it. Guaranteed, definitely. I would have yeah. done it. That's what Mike did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember. I, I yeah. remember because we was like, "Yeah, hey, we got you know, we're out of this bitch around the same time, me and you." Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And he's like, man, I got to go elsewhere. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. And boy, did he. <laughs> um, if y'all aren't familiar with what uh, what we're talking about, it's in the, the previous first, second, and fourth episodes, the, the Griff uh, trilogy. Go ahead and check those out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I saw my contract, man. Four years, $17,000 enlistment bonus, guaranteed duty station of choice in Europe and infantry. And I get a ship date of May 2401. I sign my contract. This is May 16th, 2001. So I go home, right? <clears throat> and uh, my parents are like, well, I was like, well, I'm in the army. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, but, 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 but. Uh, they couldn't do infantry in the reserves. Oh, so what, did, what job did you pick? Infantry. Well, what do you mean? Well, I'm going active duty. What? Hmm. Floored, right? Mm-hmm. And and I'm also going to Europe. Excuse uh, me. Holy shit, yeah. man! The whole yeah. house gonna burn down. Yeah. Um. Signed my contract May 16th. That's when I did my oath of enlistment. Graduated high school May 19th. Um, and then May 24th, uh, shipped for basic training. And then two weeks later, it began. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which we talked about that with Chris. Yeah. Um. In detail. And for some parts of it. So uh, graduated basic training in AIT, uh, 11 Bravo OSIT, Infantry OSIT, May, uh, September 14th, 2001. So three days after 9-11. And, uh, you know, as we discussed before, Drill Sergeant's like, hey, man, yeah, y'all are going to fucking war. I said, Shit. Yep. So I come home for two weeks. They gave us two weeks to leave because of the whole war effort thing. Report to Germany October 1st. Um you know, with Griff, and we come to find out we're going. And at the time, there was two divisions in Germany: uh, first infantry division and first armored division. And uh, we both went to first ID, and we're like, "Holy shit, man, we're going to be near each other!" And we get there, and like, "Hey, you're going to the same brigade." Little did we know, there's only one brigade at the time of uh, first infantry division in Germany, second brigade, that dagger brigade. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Son of a bitch, we're going to be in the same brigade. Maybe we'll be like, you know, because we know there's going to be a couple infantry battalions. Like, we might be in the same area or something." And uh, we both have to report to, to 126 Infantry. And we're like, son of a bitch, we're in the same battalion, dude. We're going to be on the same base. And we get there, and they're like, y'all are both going to Bravo. There was, there was four or five of us that shipped there, and we were the only two that got sent to Bravo. Um, Bravo Company, Bushmasters. I guess they're, they're called Viper Company now, which is way cool. Yeah, yeah. Time. I saw that. I don't know. Bushmaster's still cool. I mean, I, at the time, I was like, what the fuck is a Bushmaster, man? I guess it's a snake. Which you know that's cool. Um, so is a viper. So I mean, they could be they, they they could be the Dodge Vipers now. I don't know, man. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man. So we get the we get there and like we get to we get the Bravo company. Like you guys are both going to second platoon, um, fucking whatever squad. This is your room. 
and we get the same. We were roommates together. It's like, well, damn, man, that fucking worked out, didn't it? Wow, <clears throat> that's pretty cool, man. Hmm. Yeah, definitely so, pretty lucky, man. Like, like you guys, when you got there, like you got there, you were by yourself, weren't you? No, 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 no. I was. Uh, I got there with Benefil. Me and him got there the same day. Did y'all go to base together? No, we did not. Yeah. That would have been awkward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, two different. I don't know where he went, but I went. Uh, I went to Delta Delta Two Nineteen. Candy uh, Let me let me back this shit all the way up, all the mm-hmm. way up. All yeah. right. So my shit, my story is. Uh, I was actually born in Syracuse, New York. Gross. And uh, I don't remember any of that because as soon as I was, I came out, we shipped on down to Los Angeles or Inglewood to live with my grandma. It was me and my mom. That was about it. Um, up until, you know, the point that my mom met my dad or my stepdad. It was my dad. That is my dad. Leon mm-hmm. Brown. He passed away a few years ago. Rest in peace. Yeah. Love you. All that kind of shit. Anyway, um, before or when I was in high school, man, I didn't. I was just kind of the same as you. I didn't play uh, crazy sports. I did some football, but nothing nuts. I, I was just a writer, man. I was the editor of the newspaper. <laughs> fucking nerd. <laughs> I was a fucking nerd, but I was a cool nerd. I, you know, ask around. Hopefully, they yeah. you something good. Anyway, uh, same <laughs> shit, man. Graduation time. It's time to pick colleges and all this kind of shit. These motherfuckers are going to, you know, UCLA and USC and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, man, I got to do something. I want to be left out. So I'm like, I'm going to join the Army. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went to the recruiter's office. He laid down all this kind of shit for me. I'm like, I want infantry. I'm like, I don't even care about all, all this other shit. I'm, if I join the Army, I'm going to do Army <laughs> shit. I'm going to go so, do like that- fucking, huh? What's up? I was gonna say, did you did you did you have anybody in your in your world or in your circle or whatever that I mean, how did you know to pick infantry? Because when I talk to people now, yeah. like you know, like I'm I'm in the, in the, in the infantry. Oh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, my uh, two of my uncles joined. My great, I'm um, sorry, my grandfather was also, and I think he was he went to the Korean War. My two uncles, I don't think they served during wartime, but uh, I don't really know. One was a medic. I think the other one could have possibly mm-hmm. been infantry. I don't know. Um, I've never really asked him a lot about that stuff. Who knows? But yeah. I, I just know I wanted to be infantry because to me, if you join the army, I mean, I, I don't want to be fucking pushing papers and I don't want to be a chemical guy. I don't want to be doing that. I mean, I want to be out there fighting. Right. That's yeah, yeah. that's my mindset then before I knew that I was going to be out there fighting. <laughs> to actually have to be out there fighting. <laughs> that changes shit, shit up a little bit. But yeah. either way, fuck it. It is what it is. Shit. So, uh, We're going to war. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, MEP station, ship the day that, like I said, uh, Timothy McVeigh was executed. I don't remember what day that was exactly. Uh, spent forever at 30th AG. Uh, waiting for basic to start and you know basic starts like I, I was at 30th ag when Aaliyah died in that plane crash and we i remember that man a few days later to basic and then a few days later september 11th happened wait you shipped to basic when timothy mcveigh was uh put no, down? no 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 i shipped uh I, when he was executed i went to meps oh okay june 11th yeah 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 so um, oh, I went to Lusinger High School, by the way, which is in ha- or Lawndale, California. I was raised in Inglewood and Hawthorne, California. They were right next to each other. My grandma lived in Inglewood, so we were always over there. Um, what else? Yeah, went to Delta. I was in Delta 219 for basic. Uh, graduated in December. I had a lot of fun in basic, man. I got in trouble for shit. Nothing like crazy. Like I said, I got uh, an Oracle 15 for having a CD player. Yeah. And I ain't ratting nobody like whoever ratted on me. But, you know, yeah. the you code, know. whatever. Right, right, for sure. Plus, you know, karma, man. It'll, it'll, it'll come back around. Probably did. Yeah. The dude mm. who told on me, side note, his nickname in basic was Bitch Tits. I hope he hears this. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> if your name is, if you're, if you're a dude, and your nickname is Bitch Tits at any point in time. Yes. And you need you, you should probably reassess your your health and fitness. 
Yeah, he had enormous areolas. Anyway, when we fucking <laughs> graduated base training, um, which is an awesome fucking thing. If you are going to, if you're thinking about joining the fucking army, man, I'm going to highly suggest the infantry to you. Male, female, now, it don't even matter. Hop yeah. your ass in there and really serve the country. I'm not knocking other MOSs. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking other MOSs. But for me, if I'm going to go do something, I want to go do something. So, you know, yeah, infantry. So I get over to Germany. Um, same kind of thing. Like, I'm looking at all these this paperwork for, you know, wh- where you're going to go and all this kind of shit. And one, two, six. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm like, Schwein for Germany. I'm like, God, I hope there's some shit around there. And it's not just in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's actually you know it's a fucking pretty sweet city man it's awesome um and i meet yeah, you man. guys and then that was that now but my contract going in was was uh i didn't even matter i didn't care for the bonus i'm like it was 50 grand for college and i got four thousand for four years yeah which was shit now that i know that you got 17 for fucking four what the hell hey man should have joined a month earlier, whatever. The business for those recruiters change uh, weekly, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> so when you were when you were graduating basic and and and, uh, and all that in December of '01, I was in this town called Vild- Vilflicken, Germany, <laughs> uh, nicknamed Wild Chicken because um, the first portion of that Vilflicken is W I L D, and then it's Flicken. Um, but anyway, I was up there at, at a machine gunner's course um, you know, for a couple I, of days. I never went there. Really? Yeah, never went. I, I think pointed out on the map. I have no clue where Wild Flicken was. We, yeah, we we definitely went again as a as a as a company. Um, I don't know where you were then, because we were we were definitely there. Do you, wait, hang on a second. Do you, no, we were there because I mean I don't know, you may not have been there, but like I know Sergeant Bloom was still with us. Uh, and Sergeant Worth, old Mike Golf. Yeah, um, no, I know. I never went. Yeah. So I had the machine gunners course, though, man. It was cold as balls, man. Vilflick is up in the mountains. It's always cold, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that last day was like the the culmination of it, like to put it all together. And it was like, you know, you had your machine gun team. So it was me and Billy Jack. And fuck, I can't remember who my other, uh, my, because uh, you had your, Machine gunner, and then you had your assistant gunner, your AG, and then your ammo bearer, your AB. I don't remember who my AB was, but uh, <clears throat> so we we had you know you had to you had your your kit on and all that stuff, your gun. You had to ruck. You had to force march three miles to a turnaround point and clear, disassemble, and reassemble the M two forty Bravo machine gun. Which those of you that don't know, it's a big ass gun, uh, weighs twenty seven point six pounds. Um, a hundred rounds of live ammo weighs seven pounds. And then you add on the machine gun optic, which is a three power, um, optic. And that is an additional three pounds to even your gun out at 30. And so you carry all your shit, you're forced marching through the mountains to the turnaround point. It's cold as fuck. You're sweating. You don't wear snivel. March. Cause it'll just make you sweat more. And then you, when you, when you do stop, you'll, you'll get colder faster. Mm-hmm. So just BDUs, machine gun, hanging around the neck and going. And get there, there's a line. So you get the shakes and the shivers, and uh, you get up to the gun. I knock it out as fast as I can because I'm like, well, we need to get moving. Um, knocked it out pretty good. First time go. Uh, first time go for that, but failed it in EIB. How about that? <laughs> That's what and I was then, saying. I, didn't, I was confused. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then we force marched back, made a force march back to the start point and then do a range card. And you had to lay there on the ground and look what's in front of you. And you have this, this laminate piece of laminate paper that's got, um, you know, you draw out what's in front of you and you, you do estimate range to be like, okay, so this ridge line is, you know, approximately 800 meters away. Uh, there is a, a lone tree, 25 meters to the left, blah, 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 et cetera. You draw your north, all that stuff. Well, they give us a piece of laminate paper with a uh, with a dry erase marker. Shit was frozen, man. Shit wouldn't write. I had to lay there. I had to wait on two teams to go ahead of me, and then we had to lay there until I got it done. And uh, <laughs> so by the time I was complete, we had already we had been done with the ruck march for three hours. I waited an hour for each team ahead of me, and they made me lay there for an hour. 
Wow. Yeah, sweaty, no snivel gear because it was all locked up. No warming building because that was all locked up. Stupid, man. But uh, and so you met us. You met us in. Uh, we were in Grafenvir, right? Yep. Yep. To, <laughs> tell us. Tell us about the first time. My the first our introduction. My introduction. Our, me meeting me meeting you was fucking weird because for one, it was the first time I was really meeting the platoon. I was yeah. back in the rear, a rear D rear detachment. Um. Just waiting for a, a ride, I guess, to go from Schweinfurt to where you guys were. Yeah. Um, so you know, you get on the on the bus. Yeah, all clean shit. T eight fifty. All your mm-hmm. shit that you get from mm-hmm. the units, nice and clean, shiny. Yep. You know, Green as can be. There's no marks on anything. No scuffs. Everything's perfect. <laughs> you get to the field, and I meet you guys, and you guys look like a bunch of dirty, dirty assholes. And I'm like, God damn, these <laughs> fucking guys here, man. Everyone looks like they're having a miserable time, but there's still just a spark of happiness with this group. Believe it yeah. or not, like it, it, it. Anytime we have some wild shit going on, or you know, there's still just a little bit of spark of it could it could be worse. Yeah, man. And we were. I feel we were like you guys had that going on when I, when I met you guys. Anyway. Yeah. No, and we we were definitely. Uh, I, I I can only speak for our platoon, second platoon, roughnecks. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, we definitely long before the, the saying embrace the suck became a thing. We definitely knew how to embrace the suck, man. Like this just sucks, man. But like, it's going to get better. It's cold, man, but it's going to get warmer. You know what I'm saying? This ruck march is long, but we'll be done with it in a bit. You know what I mean? It was always something like that, man. Yeah. I don't know what it so, was. Man. It was an interesting dynamic. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm showing up to the unit clean, dude. <laughs> and the new dude mm-hmm. and it did not t- work out immediately i think uh didn't you try to throw me in the mud i tried to convince you to i tried yeah, to convince I said, you to jump no. in. i'm like that's fucking that's yeah that's man i'm sitting stupid. there i don't want to do that that's yeah <laughs> you flat out told me because like all dirty we had already been in graph for i think at this point like a week and a half two weeks you know yeah. and there's not a lot of sh- you're in the field right so there's not a lot of showering and doing laundry and all that stuff so you're just kind of living in your own funk and then you show up you it's know not like zest fully clean and shit yeah man pristine and i'm like come on man get in that fuck there's like a mud puddle right there and i'm like fuck no why would i do that that's fucking <laughs> stupid and on top of it you know it's <laughs> january right so it's you know it's cold outside too and uh yeah and you were like no I'm not gonna do that. I'm like, oh, come in on, back man. Back in my head, I'm like, should I fucking do this to try to like blend <laughs> in with these motherfuckers? And I'm like, yeah. nah, we've got to stand on our principles from the start, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what? Did, but what? Did, but what did I do after that? Didn't you jump in the puddle yourself I, and try to throw me into it or something like that? It didn't work. I didn't go down. I jumped in it myself. Yeah. I'm like, wow, you are a dumb asshole. Yeah. This yeah. that look cold. I'm like, you look cold. <laughs> You're dirty and cold now. You're wet, dirty, and cold. I'm clean. I'm looking around at other people like, maybe I should have dived in. Maybe, I, I mean, you know, whatever. You know, yeah. it, consequences are consequences, but yeah. at least I'm not cold and wet and dirty right now. And a dumbass. And a dumbass. <laughs> yeah. And here, and here we are uh, almost, because that was in January 01, so we're, or 02, I'm sorry. So we're, we're coming up on 20 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 20 whole years. Me and you. Weird. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, Grafenbeer and Hollenfels, man, longest field problem ever. I think we talked about it in the in the doc episode. Yeah. Um, if you uh, ever been there, you know what we're talking about. Like it's yeah. In the field, it's real shitty. It's fucking terrible. Especially <laughs> but, when you're especially when you're infantry. When you're able to go into the like little shop at little area, little town mm-hmm. shit, is it really not that bad? Yeah. I remember, dude, like in Graf, like having to walk. Was it a? It was a mile, mile and a half. From, through the woods <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah from where we had where we were set up to that little shop at mm-hmm. and we would gladly walk that and it was nothing man nothing oh, yeah. it's nothing no problem now a bitch about like man there's no fucking parking spaces at, you know in front of walmart <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i was just thinking about that a few days ago like man i walk way down there i get me a soda and a coke uh, like a coke uh yeah. cup Mm-hmm. dump that shit give me a beer put that beer in there walk back 
Like, man, I hope I don't get caught by nobody. <laughs> Never got caught, man. Thank God. Yeah. But, man, that beer was fucking delicious. After all hey. the fucking days, no fucking yeah. nothing. Oh, yeah. You remember we were at that same – it was a different field problem uh, in 2003, I believe. We were – you and I, I think we just got a haircut. We were walking out of that fucking shop at – you had just lit a cigarette. Remember? Hey, no, keep going. You don't remember this? Walking out of that shop at man, we stopped. You, you, you know, say, hey, man, hey, hold up. You light your cigarette in your – it's in your right hand. You and I are walking, and we're in the oh, field. Man. I'm all the way wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Already. <laughs> well, wa- yeah, walking and smoking, that's a no-go. And mm-hmm. then who happens to cross paths, paths with us um, but a full bird colonel? Of course. Uh, and, 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 we, <laughs> and we do the right thing. We salute. Mm-hmm. But uh, old Tyree Brown has a cigarette in his right hand. Of course. You, as a, as a, as a, as a specialist, we were both E4s at the time. You as a specialist saluted a full bird colonel with a lit cigarette. Hey, man. Sign Acting like you're a warrant officer or something. <laughs> Just doing what you want. Well, I mean, E4 Mafia. You know, what are you going to do, sir? Yeah, he's going to fucking you. track me down. Track yeah. me down and fucking graph or haunt. Where we graph? Graph here, yeah. Fucking find me, dude. Good luck. Yeah. I do remember um, when we were there for that yeah, field problem is when they came out with that movie, uh, Black Hawk Down. And yes. I didn't realize, um, first of all, my knowledge of American military history was very, very limited at the time. And I didn't realize that that was a thing. And in retrospect, dude, like you look back on it in 2002, uh, Mogadishu went down in oh, 93. Yeah, 93. I yeah, so there. this was... Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Operation Gothic Serpent. So, Something like that. Yeah. And so this was nine, uh, nine years, give or take, from the anniversary of that. Mm. And they come out, you know, the book is out and they make the movie and they gave us a, a day off. And they said, everybody is going to the theater on Camp Aachen and we were all watching this fucking movie. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, because some of the guys that we were there with, some of the old timers, I think it was a uh, fuck. It might have been a commander's first. I have no idea, but they, you know, they they were either involved in some way, shape, or form, or knew people that were. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, man, as a young private, honestly, that was uh, that was kind of a pretty impressionable moment. Um, because you you really kind of, especially considering that we at that time we knew we were going to war at some point. Yeah, and it made and, it made everything a little bit. Just slightly different. I gotta say, you know, uh, it's a fuck. It's it's a movie. Yeah, uh, I know it's based on some real shit, but it's still a movie, so things are are extra spicy for whatever reasons. Some liberties were taken here and there. Yeah, I get it, but uh, <laughs> it made me think like, all right, well, you know, this shit could happen to us. Yeah. So you know, yeah. What what did they do? Even though it was fucking, it was a. Yeah, it was hit or miss the entire time for those dudes, but um, right, yeah. So, <clears throat> so we finished up that that ro- that field rotation, sixty four days in Grafenvir and Hohenfels, and uh, that April, that following April. Um, so we were back in, in Schweinfurt for about a month and a half, and then uh, we deployed to Kosovo and we're there for six and a half months. Pretty uneventful uh, time. Um, did a lot of walking around the Balkan mountains, got to do our first air insertion mission, got our EIBs. Um, but pretty much, you know, mostly just standing in guard towers from eight to 12 hours and staring at cornfields or yeah. whatever. Easiest six months you're ever going to get. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, man, I was blowing money on the internet. I got my, uh, I got my final installment. So they fucked up on my bonus and they, they paid me, when I got to Germany, a, a one installment, <clears throat> they paid me again in, in early '02, and then when we were in Kosovo, I got my final installment, so it was tax free. I didn't give a shit about any of that money. I didn't get my bonus until I had got back to Los Angeles and was out of the army. Really? Yep. I actually That's... used that money for a down payment from my uh, Mustang. Huh. <clears throat> Did not know that. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I never. I didn't. I don't like sitting in line and doing paperwork. 
Oh, I'm yeah. like, it's, I'm gonna get the money no matter what. So, uh, fuck it. it part of my, my in, idea. part of my in processing was like, hey, did you? Let me, let's see your contract because you had your 201 file or whatever it was at the time, and um, <clears throat> I, I, you know, that was in there. I didn't, I didn't give, I didn't do anything about it. You know, I was just like, here's this. I'm a private. I don't fucking know. Yeah, no, it was in there. There was something wrong with it, and I didn't. Oh. I really didn't want to go back down there and fuck with it. I'm like, when I leave. I'll get this shit done. And that's what happened. That actually yeah. worked out pretty good for me. Yeah. Um, like I said, because like we lusted over those Mustangs. I'm like, I'm going to fucking get one of those fucking things for sure. When I get out of here and I got one. Oh, dude. Yeah. I remember after Iraq, dude, like we sat there and like obsessed over that new body style. Yeah. Uh, and 2005 for y'all, y'all listening. Like that was when they came out with that new, the new retro style. And that was the <laughs> shit to me. I'm like, I gotta have it. I gotta get one. Man, you look at those uh, those uh, 05s now, especially like the this the V6s, like they do not look good comparatively. I mean, they got better. I would say around 07, 08, they kind of fine tuned that particular body style. They weren't really good until they got the 5.0s back because they were yeah. rolling, uh, I want to say, 4.6s or 4.8s. Four I think it was, I want to say it was 4.8s, but I, I really don't know. The GTs, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I did not get a V. I did not get the five point oh. I had a I had the the smaller GT. It only had three hundred horses, but it was <laughs> back then. That was a lot. Yeah. Now you Hellcats are out here. Fucking yeah. crazy. Right. SRT vans. Um, <laughs> I uh, I had a Mustang. Uh, yeah, you did. It had little ponies on the side of it. It was. It, cute. it did. It it was cute. I had a. Uh, I had the type of Mustang that. Um, a 16 year old girl gets for her birthday. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I yeah. love the fuck out of that car, man. <laughs> I babied that car, dude. And I drove oh, the shit man. out of it, man. I came back. So I bought it right after Kosovo. I came home. It was my first big purchase ever. Put a, a decent size down payment on it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then it sat at my dad's house in Arkansas while we were in Germany. I could never bring it over. Mm. So, you know, when I when I was finally able to drive it June of 05, man, it had like 5,000 miles on it. You know what I mean? Oh, man. They was doing donuts in the parking lot and your shit. No, I mean, I, that was me driving when I came home on leave every time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I drove the shit out of that car. But, like, I came home after the Army and I fucking, I put a, a, a cold air intake on it. I programmed it. I reprogrammed it. Uh, adjusted the shifting points in it. And I mean, for a V6, dude, it 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 performed pretty decently. Um, I miss that car. It was uh, it was gray, like the uh, the old Eleanors, um, uh, minus the racing stripes. I remember, but, uh, man. I remember me and Sil went and visited, and we saw yeah. the uh, the, the that cranjaw on Mustang. the back of it. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was fun times. Bad. I often think about that every time I drive back from Tulsa. Actually, every time I drive back from Tulsa, because y'all flew in the Tulsa. Yeah. Every time I drive back, I'm like, man, I, 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 to this day, I just drove back from Tulsa not too long ago, actually. And I was just like, man, I still feel bad about cramming you on the back of the fucking Mustang <laughs> and then getting lost on the way home. Because, you know, we, you know, GPS on your phone wasn't a thing and you didn't have the ones you put up in the window yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still I feel even, bad about that. I didn't that. even know that we were lost. Oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was just driving. Yeah, you know, man. When, you just, when you're visiting from other states, I, it, I'm just looking out the window. Yeah, it, it was dark. Shit to see. <laughs> yeah, right, man. Oklahoma, man. That part of Oklahoma ain't nothing to see. Yeah, it wasn't a goddamn thing. But, <laughs> but you uh, know, it was still cool. Yeah. Um, I had so many cars, dude. Now I'm thinking about it. Fuck. Over yeah, time. Geez. I feel like you've I feel like you've had a lot. I've had a lot of cars. I'm a I'm a car person. If I ever do a car podcast separate mm. from this. Well, you you had a uh YouTube a, a car YouTube channel, yeah. Yeah. The Is mighty yeah, is it still going it's, or no? It's still up. I, we haven't done anything in, in quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I got rid of the charger. I had a scat pack, y'all. I don't fucking V8s all day until uh, I just recently got a Jeep uh, Gladiator. I got a uh, the Rubicon Gladiator. It's nice. It's fucking dope. Y'all. I love Jeeps now. I'm a Jeep person. Can't but you Jeep, Jeep motherfuckers man. are crazy in here in California. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are fucking crazy. Like, first of all, you know, like, there's a Jeep wave, which is cool. Okay, yeah, I yeah. get it, waving motherfuckers and shit like mm-hmm. this. But out here, these motherfuckers are psychopaths if you don't wave back. They will chase you down. And, what? And slice through. Tra- 
Man, I'm telling you, I just got the Gladiator. Just put mm. the big wheels on it. The shit's nice, man. No lift. 35 inch wheels. Pretty, pretty, pretty truck, man. Gray, graphite gray with, with gold, not like bronze rims. Anyway, I'm on the freeway driving home and I see this orange blur in the peripheral here. Weaving in and out of traffic. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? So I go and look. It's a fucking another gladiator. I'm like, all right, well, cool. Man, I don't know what the fuck you want from me? Mm-hmm. But he's weaving and like waving like a fucking moron, like a crazy person, psychopath. I'm like, what the fuck? So I speed the fuck up, and my truck has cold air and some other shit on it. That makes it just a little bit faster than other shit. Other shit. So I fucking take off. I'm like, you're not getting this way, buddy. I'm fucking gone. <laughs> I'm in the truck lane. <laughs> Fuck, I'm flying, man. And this motherfucker's Ooh. cutting trucks, cutting off cars and shit, weaving and shit. And he gets right up next to me. Because after a while, I'm like, I'm just eating up gas, getting away from this dude. We've got the same fucking engine. And uh, he's just like, I wave at you. You didn't wave back. I'm like, bro, no, it's man. okay, man. Take it easy. That happened to me on several occasions. People with Jeeps in Los Angeles area are fucking crazy. Yeah. Period. I love my Jeep, but fuck, if I could just yeah. tint my windows and not, not see anybody. Yeah. <laughs> or them not see you. Yeah. yeah I wave, awesome. I wave, motherfucker. I wave. You can't tell? Oh, it's with the tent. It's the tent. That's what it is. There. Not here, man. Here. So I had a TJ. I had a 1999 uh, Wrangler. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it was ugly as fuck. But, you know, it was a Wrangler and I was proud of it, man. I, uh, and so at the time, the, the, the rule that a lot of Jeepers around here followed is you didn't wave at a, new, a newer model Jeep, especially if it was stock, if, even oh. if they waved at you, because they're not a Jeeper. They're just some dickhead with a Jeep. And so I live in a college town or near college. Town. I don't live in Fayetteville anymore, but I live near Fayetteville, Arkansas, where the University of Arkansas is. And so there are a ton of of mall crawlers. And I imagine out there in LA, it's, it's mostly mall crawlers as well. You know, oh Jeeps God. that have never seen a, a pay an, a road that's not paved, you know? Yeah. My, my shit, I, I go off road all the time, like all the time as much yeah. as I can. And there's people in my area where like right now I can look out the window and this guy with a white Rubicon with big 20 inch chrome wheels Mm -mm. and these itty bitty tires i'm like man what a fucking waste yeah it is yeah it is how you you spend all that money to not go fucking not potentially fuck it up yeah yeah i mean (laughs) especially if it's a rubicon man because that rubicon you can take that you can take that places yeah we do man out the box like uh yeah out the box it's so much fun like i thought i was going to be pissed off about getting rid of the charger because you know Speed is fun. It's fast. Mm-hmm. It's loud. Mm-hmm. It looks bitching, but it's just something different about going up the side of a mountain mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, yeah. uh, you know, engaging lockers and all this kind of shit to, yeah, to get over stuff. It's a lot more fun than just uh, speeding. It's... Dangerous as fucking the streets. You should never do that. Don't ever fucking street race. As a former yeah, police I... officer, don't ever fucking do that shit. Don't be a shithead. Uh-huh. Um, uh, a girl I went to high school with actually died that way. Um, I had a trans. cousin die. Yeah. I had a cousin die from. Uh, she, I don't think she was street racing, but she. Uh, it was just in it, not not paying attention. So she wasn't even driving the car, driving the car. But yeah, no, way, she was. Man, this this one wasn't either, man. She was the passenger of a car, and just yeah, they, the driver lost control. Um, but yeah, man, that's the thing about a jeep, though. You you can, no matter where you are, for the most part. Obviously, if you're at a beach looking at the fucking ocean or whatever the shit, like, <clears throat> you know. It, you, most places you can be like, yeah, I can drive over that. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I can take that. Except <clears throat> with the with the gladiator, you have the bed, so you have that extra it's little like bit of the back longer. that you have to worry yeah. about. Yeah, which is you know, not a big yeah. deal. Negligible. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 not a lot longer. I have a Cherokee now. I have an 05 Cherokee. Um, mm-hmm. It's not a lot longer than it. I can take that. I, I mean, I'm not going to take it all the same places that I would take my my the Wrangler that I used to have, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I love those fucking things, man. I, yeah. I really do want a two door now. I want a two door, uh, two door Jeep as opposed to the, tr- the uh, Gladiator. If you like get a, a two door, you have to get 
a TJ or an LJ or an you early know, model, early model JK. I was really considering like a, a twenty. So my well, my kid has a uh, twenty sixteen. Yeah, twenty sixteen black uh, two door, and I'm like, it's really not that bad. Yeah, the sport. That's a JK. Yeah, I dig it. And I would get totally get the base model one. I wouldn't get the Rubicon. I know wild yeah, like that. Yeah, there's you kind of a jerk off if you get the Rubicon. I think a little bit. Like no, you really bit. are. You really are. Um, <laughs> the, the Rubicons, the uh, the Mojaves. I mean, yeah. you're just spending extra money for shit that like, like a regular. Like, I swear to God, man, I have seen some fucking YJ Jeeps, and these are like early '90 Jeeps, the one with the square headlights, the Wranglers with the square headlights. Yeah. Um, I you know I YJs with a fucking four banger will mm. fucking do almost the same shit as a Rubicon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, like, I mean, don't, and don't get me wrong. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, Rubicons obviously have all the performance shit in there. You know, they can they can definitely do some shit. But mm. for your average jeeper on the road out there, they're they're not out there it's, fucking crawling up the goddamn fucking Kilimanjaro. Exactly. You know You're totally nice and safe with just a sport. If you want to spice <laughs> it up, you can spice it up. Yeah. Save a ton of money. Change yeah, out and, the fucking and that's the hose, thing. all that. And there's a saying in the Jeep world, right? Uh, do you know the saying? Oh, uh, I'm sure it has shit to do with money. Because yeah. all you do is spend money on, on fucking well, modification. Well, there's, there's that too. There's, so Jeep, <laughs> the, the, the one I think you're talking about is Jeep, uh, uh, just empty every pocket. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. As an acronym. But yeah, so but the other one that I'm talking about is built, not bought. Yeah. Yeah. So you buy the base model and you're like, you know what? I want to, I'm going to change the gearing in it. So you change the gearing yourself. I want to, I want to put a lift in there. So you put the lift in there yourself if you can, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Built, not bought. There's a pride in that. There's a pride in that just like there is, you know, with us being infantry. I remember when I got my fucking cross rifles, man, my drill sergeant global gave me my cross. I cried, man. I sat there and fucking cried. I was so proud of myself, man. Mm -hmm. You know? And when you do work on your vehicle, there's, there's a sense of pride in that. And it it's, a, it's a big thing in the Jeep community. And you went out and bought a Rubicon, so you know. Hey, but I still build shit on it. God mm-hmm. damn it. It's not like it, like, it's not sitting there just fucking looking pretty. I go out there and I get it dirty. I go to uh, all the off-road parks out here. Yeah. As much I'd be as too possible. afraid to scratch it up, man. I'd be too afraid to scratch it up. Fuck that. I don't give yeah. a fuck. That's the point, yeah. kind of. Like, it's going to get scratched up. Yeah. You're However, right. you're I'm right. going to apply some ceramic coating to it myself. That's a good idea. Mm. Yeah. You know what super I like? easy thing to do, by the way. If you ever uh, wanted to do that on your own, it's an easy task. <laughs> you I know what cannot I like? stress how great your car will look afterwards. No, nah, man, you ought to rhino that whole bitch. Oh no, man, that's just yeah, dude. Nah. You can you can roll that thing down down Kilimanjaro, and <laughs> it'll look and the it, exact same. I saw they have a couple of uh, rhino out fucking jeeps out here i'm like it looks cool but eh. and it's it's got that matte finish to it i, I dig it man i like that I, I like the matte finish though yeah i've seen it in other colors i've seen it in white uh, and red out here believe it or not they and blue yeah i had i used to, i had a picture saved on my phone for the longest of a of a blue one matte uh right aligned fucking all the all, whole thing this, this jeep must have cost more uh you know six figures and uh mm-hmm. there wasn't in a showroom not being used but you know, it is what it is. I tell you what, once this fucking podcast kicks off and gets going for real, we start making some money, and I get some <laughs> gas money. I'll drive. I'll, I'll drive on down to Arkansas. I'll get some of those fucking. Uh, you know, uh, they have the uh, the G parks you go to, and they'll send you the uh, the uh, medallion if you yeah. Uh, complete yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool to to scoop some up along the way. Yeah, um, that's also, that's awful high hopes that you think that we're gonna like. Make if you're gonna make enough money if you can drive your gladiator from California to Arkansas. That's the goal for this podcast. For this season is enough gas money to drive from se- California to se- are we doing seasons? Sure. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, well, I don't know what I mean, else we're gonna talk about after this. Yeah, you're right. We'll figure it out. Um yeah. I'll tell you though, I mean I mean if it does if it does generate money, that's cool. But um I mean that's not the goal, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you know, yeah if it pops up, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Tacos. right. I mean, it's it's kind of like, it's kind of like your four thousand dollar bonus. I mean, if, you know, I get it at some point, maybe who knows? Mm-hmm. Fuck it. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, fuck, dude. I mean, I've had people message and say like, this this is blowing up. Y'all are doing really good. Um, I'm we're, you know we're digging what y'all are doing, 
and um and uh and that's man that is awesome to hear like you know uh, we've been we, for those folks listening like like we're every day like you know we're tracking like what's going on with it like how many the you know how many how many followers the facebook page has or like listeners and stuff like we're looking yeah. at this shit like why what is going on because we mm-hmm. just figured we just figured that it would be like you know a couple dudes sitting around telling stories who who wants to listen to that i only thought it was going to be guys from bravo company that was going to listen to this yeah and, and we're going to have a laugh about it and you know maybe 50 yeah. people would would check it out overall and i didn't yeah. expect that to happen within the first hour so yeah man it's, it's pretty, kind it's of crazy pretty rad. Yeah. um but uh you know so so there we are sh- whoa 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 yeah. share if you're listening this far it's we're eight, 87 minutes into this and then you guys actually yeah. listen to the entire thing uh share it god damn it fuck <clears throat> not to be confused share with, with somebody share. famous <laughs> with somebody famous <laughs> somebody, if you, somebody you somebody. or somebody you know is famous share yeah. Say, also hey, if you are not famous share post post your post our shit on your shit like hey listen to this shit yeah, and it's not shit. It's this finely polished turd. You can you you can call it shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck, man. Um, um, no, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I'm just. It really is. It really is pretty. Like it, it is humbling, is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because um, it's it's like wow, man. That's that's cool. But I mean, to you and I, the shit that we're talking about, like when we talk about our deployments and we talk about army life, like to you and I, that's just the norm. You know what I'm saying? People, like we, we can tell somebody who's never deployed or or whatever, uh, a, a civilian, we can be like, yeah, I went to Iraq. And they're like, oh my God, that's so crazy. And automatically in their head, it's just this unfathomable place, this untangible place, this place they can never go to. Um, and we experience things that they'll never experience. And to us, it was just like work. Like mm-hmm. work, it's, it was just like them going to their job. Like, oh, okay, well, like, what do you do for a living? Oh, well, uh, uh, I work at Target. Okay, well, tell me about your day. Oh, I don't want to hear it. That's the same mentality that folks in the military have when it comes to what we do. Yep, exactly. Um, same. But you know, uh, like like we had talked about, I think we mentioned in previous episodes, is that fuck, man. Like, look, we're not we're not special, right? We're not operators. We're not tier anything. We're just regular old army grunts and as far as the grunts world is concerned the army infantry world we're the lazy ones because we were mechanized (laughs) we didn't jump out of shit you know we didn't run 15 miles a day we didn't have to wear 80 pounds of fucking bullshit to walk wherever the fuck to camp out under the stuff we had bradley's we had mechanized baby tanks is what they call baby tankers Mm -hmm. yeah all in Um, all it wasn't that bad no nah, man, good times, good times, good times for sure. I remember, I remember, dude, when we got um, uh, a couple folks from the eighty second, eighty uh, second Airborne, um, mm-hmm. um, uh, Sergeant Smith and uh, Sergeant Gill and Sergeant Asher, and uh, just mad as hell that they yeah. came to the mechanized world. <laughs> and uh, Sergeant Gill, especially, he was not happy about it. I think he wanted to stay in the eighty uh, second for as long as he could. And um, I'm glad he came to us, though, right? Because like we discussed before, oh, yeah. like he bought a fuck ton of knowledge. So did Absher and and and, uh, and Vincent. Sorry, Vin- uh, sorry, Vincent. Sorry, Smith. Mm-hmm. His name is Vincent. Um, <clears throat> they bought a ton of knowledge that we didn't have. Um, yeah. And uh, so definitely thankful that they came. And I think I think Sergeant Gill definitely came around, man. Like he. Um, I think, yeah, I think he got comfortable. Not, I wouldn't say comfortable because while he was there with us, he still went to Ranger School. Yep. He, Pathfinder, he right? Yeah, he didn't sit around and relax. He fucking oh, still man. continued his career heavy. Yeah, he put in the work, and, man. He definitely did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. And you know what's wild? The majority of those guys, they're like Sergeant Majors now. Yeah. Like Sergeant Gill is a Sergeant Major. Like yeah. Sergeant Absher is, is so, uh, Sergeant Major. Is Sergeant Major. So. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and we got a bunch of other people from our unit who continue to continue their career, and they're up there in rank, master sergeants and sergeant majors and whatnot. That yeah. says a lot about what the fuck we did as as a whole and how we were trained. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
and, and, and these dudes are out there still kicking ass. Like Sergeant Gill looks like he's aged. Sergeant Major Gill. Um looks like yeah, he's aged Sergeant only Major slightly. Gill. Uh Sergeant no, Major he, he looks exactly the same. He hasn't aged at all. I don't know, man. I was looking at some of those pictures when he had the uh the like, his hair looked blonde as shit. The one you posted on the Facebook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ever blonde, blonde. Yeah, man. He, he he straight up looks like he's GQ in that photo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's a model right there. Good, yeah. good looking yeah. man you are, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Major Gill. Uh, hot pants, Herbie. Hot um, pants, Herbie. I said that at parade rest, that. by the way. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I heard that I hope... was a question uh, for a board. Like, uh, oh, was it? Yeah, I believe so. Somebody said it was a, it was an actual. Uh, what is Sergeant Gill's uh, nickname? And it was Hot Pants Irby. So there you go, that's, Blue Spaders. I that's gave you that. hilarious. If that ever pops up, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's, but he, you, you know, know, that's awesome to, to know that like you're a part of history. Not like what I yeah. did, but like to even have your name mentioned in somebody's board. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. You won. Yeah. No, it's a, it's definitely we, and I feel like the bulk of our dudes, um, you know, and that's kind of one of the things that we definitely want to talk about too is 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 life post military. Oh yeah. And um, I feel like a lot of our dudes have done some pretty cool shit, man. Um, you know, like with with with, with what uh, Doc was saying that he's doing now, man. Fucking, he's just he, it. I dude, I was so glad to hear him say that he is enjoying life. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. That is happy to me, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Like he may not he he may not be the richest motherfucker. You know, he sure as fuck is ugly. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but if he's enjoying life, you know, you can't that's awesome. That that's cuz I mean cuz you, you you think about it, man. Like wealth can be measured in in multiple ways, right? Like yes, know, big can. bank account, blah blah blah. But like dude Doc is living his his best fucking life, and that's that's badass to hear, especially knowing, you know, what he you know went through and experienced, um, and a lot of us went through and experienced in in our own ways. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, another 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 one of our uh, uh, fellow blue spaders that I uh, uh, am exceptionally proud of for accomplishing what he's doing is uh, uh, Love Nate Love. Oh yeah. Um, for those of you who like guns, look up. Uh, frontier tactical um so love after he left the military and I'm, i i talked to him today i'm hoping to bring him on he's uh, he's interested uh, oh, that's I, that'd be awesome yeah man he's, he's got a unique perspective i actually kind of looked up to him because he was kind of this uh he was kind of a thorn in the side of leadership because he would always bring up good points that counter uh counter uh Contradicted. Oh man, I had a couple of beers. Contradicted. <laughs> you know what was going on, and uh, he mm-hmm. was always that voice of reason. I think for uh, the lower enlisted dudes, yeah. um, and he wasn't afraid to voice it. Man, he was a very intelligent guy. And, and you know, he left the military, and um, you know, he got into uh, machine working and, and smithing, and um, created his own gun company. Like it's fucking badass. He 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 moved it from Oregon to Florida. And uh, it's called Frontier Tactical, man. You can look it up. Uh, his uh, his weapon system, son of a bitch. What is it called? I... It's the one where you can switch the caliber, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a multi caliber system, and basically, you know, you, you, you detach the barrel, and um, there might be a slight modification to the receiver, and um, <clears throat> and yeah, man, you can shoot. He's got a video somewhere floating around. It's just a um, a, you know, a, a plastic table. They're out of range. It's a table just with all these different barrels, and he's got the same, um, same lower. Yeah, the same lower, and uh, he's just cycling through. He's like pow, 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 pow. Takes the barrel off, puts on a new barrel, does some shit, slaps in the fucking magazine, locks and loads, and like within seconds, he's shooting a different caliber. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's pretty cool, man. It's us, uh, so yeah. the warlock, warlock system. Not, not to be confused with like witches and warlocks, but war lock, L O C K. So frontier tactical warlock. And, um, so yeah, man. So I'm definitely excited to, to get him on here and, and to hear, hear all that stuff. Um, yeah. it's always good to hear people doing things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Old friends doing things from, from people from the unit doing shit. 
you know, sharing what they're doing and letting us know what's going on. The only way you can really get your shit out there is if you fucking share it. The more you yeah. share, we'll share. And and we're friends. These are our, our friends. So, of course, we're going to tell you about it. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't, I wasn't going, I wasn't saying all that to, like, you know, plug his business. But at the same time, you know, plug, 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 check out Frontier yeah. Tactical. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because... Loves our homie, and um, we want his company to do well. We want him to do well, and we want you to have, you know, a good product if if, yeah. if that's what you're into. Um, and with that, you just sit down with just sitting at home, not sitting at home, farming. We got people who are far, farming yeah. now. That's yeah. dope. I haven't never never planted a thing in my life. Well, no, I grew some grass once. You got a you got a son, right? Yeah, planted that seed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, uh. sex. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it at least once successfully. At least once. Yeah, everything worked out one time. Damn. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm gonna shoot the piss off with here's that. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll just don't worry about it. I edited it out. Yeah, right, right. Of course. Yeah, yeah. You haven't uh you know, I, I noticed that you uh this episode so far, I think, uh, with that with that being the one exception, I think everything else has been good to go. So there's not a really that's the only thing that you're gonna have to edit out of this one. Yeah, that's um, it. And I'll, 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 and I'll, I'll take care of it. <laughs> I t- yeah, man. I, I'll tell you, like you, you probably are like the best editor I know when it comes to uh, editing. Oh, you know, man. I'll put the work yeah. in. Take yeah, the time. You do. You know. Yeah. Do the do. do the si- do the science of it. Yeah, I mean, right. It really is. So, for those of you at home listening, like, imagine this: Tyree Brown, um. In a lab coat, because that's what he wears when he does this. He does he has a lab coat. He's got a whole lab, like beakers and, and droppers and microscopes and stuff. And there he is. And it's kind of like in a scene from like CSI or whatever, you know, yeah. where mm-hmm. um, that one goth chick is for some reason working in a crime lab because, you know, they're appealing to those kinks. Um, <laughs> now, he's not Tyree's not dressed up as a goth chick, uh, probably. I, I really don't know. Could be, uh, no. but the, you know he's in there with his. He doesn't even wear. He doesn't even wear glasses, but he's got glasses on. Um, just I sciencing. Glasses. I wear glasses now. Oh, you do now. <clears throat> That's right. Yes. You do now. Yeah. I'm old. Yeah. Cool. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, yeah. happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. What can you say? <clears throat> I wore but glasses you, for a you, little bit. You kind of brushed up on something kind of funny. Yeah. The music. Dude. The music music you said something about music a second ago i don't think i said that word at all i thought you said something about music well i picked up on music what kind of okay. uh what music right. do you listen to now fuck man um <clears throat> those 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 in my uh so, so friends of mine would say that i only listen to metal but that's not entirely true i listen to a lot of things um matter of fact when i was at the gym this song that i was listening to um uh, so keep in mind i'm not a religious person um, but mm. I was listening to the song um, that I sent you earlier today, God, We Need You Now by Struggle Jennings and uh, uh, Caitlin Curtis. Um, as, on you repeat, say the, as you say the title, yeah, it seems more Jesus-ish to me. So to me, it came off as like, like God, We Need You Now. I mean, I get it. Like after you said that to me, I was listening to the lyrics. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this definitely has a lot of like – overtones for sure but mm-hmm. i don't know i just like how the song feels as it is an interesting vibe to me and honestly it's like so me when it comes to music dude i never i never really look lyrics at first honestly the whole thing happens if i can listen to what i'm hearing i don't give a fuck about the content of the lyrics if it makes me feel a way because i'm more about the music and to me the vocals are, are just another instrument and so I can listen. That's why I can listen to metal where you can't understand what they're saying, because to me, it's a symphony. It's an orchestra. It's this masterpiece that's put together by like this, like finely tuned, very like my, one of my favorite bands of all time is Lamb of God. And I finally got to see them in concert uh, not too long ago. And they did not disappoint, dude. Absolutely amazing show. Um, and they're really good dudes. Um but like I mentioned before, you know, I'm, I'm still I still listen to Zayo and Living Sacrifice, and I mean, just t- Lorna Shore. I uh, just recently became a good fan of them. I mean, this insane metal. But at the same time, you know, I also on my I'm like right now, you know, I uh, 
<clears throat> on my phone, I've got Havana, right, by Camila Cabello and, you know, um, uh, Lalisa, whoever the shit that lady is. You know what I'm saying? So I, Lalisa, Lalisa, Industry Baby by Lil Nas X. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I have all the stuff on my phone. You know what I'm saying? I have the record player song. A lot of bullshit you hear on TikTok, to be honest. That's where I get my new music from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I listen to. Now, before you get what? into that, what I... before you get into that, now, I, what I want, what am I trying to say? My, I want to say this before you say what you listen to, because I know what you listen to. When Tyree and I first became good friends or started talking, me and Dave and Haugen and Meat were standing around the barracks in the hallway <laughs> talking about going to see System of a Down in Paris. And you just happened to be walking by and you said, did you say System of a Down? I was like, my impression of you, I knew you were from Inglewood, California. And you remember when you first told me that? I was like, from the songs? <laughs> I'm like you right? fucking ass yeah dude cause I was I came from a predominantly white town but I knew NWA you know I knew Easy e and Dre and all those dudes um, but I didn't you know them I didn't personally. know you know I didn't know you know what I'm saying and so like you know I meet you and you know Inglewood holy fuck actual Inglewood it's a real place it's like I'm some kind of fucking exotic bird. Like, oh, I know, man. I became a fan. What? Of but then you said, and you stand up on both feet without tripping <laughs> over. God, hey, man, that's hey, that's how y'all motherfuckers talk about people from fucking Arkansas, man. I do. <clears throat> I'm not. Yeah. Not, hey, yeah. Hey, hey. You wear shoes. Yeah, um, exactly. We were talking about going to see System of a Down in Paris, and you were like, "System of a Down." I was like, "What do you know about System of a Down?" And you about bitch slap me. <laughs> Yeah. Now continue with what you're about to say. So currently, I don't listen to much System of a Down except the old stuff. Yeah. I listen to more like Chili Peppers. Yep. Because I'm from California, and then like mm-hmm. Foo Fighters because I'm from the West Coast. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, I, you can take that. Yeah. Uh, I listen to MF Doom. I'm a big MF Doom yeah, fan. Sure. Yes, away. you are. Huge yes, MF Doom fan, so much so that I'm I'm dressed up as Doctor Doom is for Halloween. My friend is helping me out with that. Imagine that, uh, Derek. It's fucking awesome. I can't wait for for you to see the pictures. Anyway, uh, <laughs> wow. Excuse me. What else do I listen to? Uh, I listen to a little bit of everything except well, country, man. Who like, I can't right. do country. I'm sorry. Now I want you. You say that, but I want you to look up Wheeler Walker Jr. I'll what? say. I'll say. Wheeler. Walker Jr. Okay, I'll check it. If you hate country, you'll love this country. If you if you have a sense of humor, you'll love this country. If you have a uh, if you have a if your mind is in the gutter, you'll love this country. Um, who's your who, but who's your who's your favorite all time uh, artist? My favorite all time artist. I can <laughs> listen to at any point. I can just pick up whatever they're doing and listen. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna. It's uh, fuck, man. Um, I think. Well, I'm such a big Chili Pepper fan, but the the guitarist from the Chili Peppers, is yeah. John Frusciante. I'm a huge John Frusciante fan. I love the fuck. Whatever he does is fucking golden. Yeah, no, that that's what that's what I knew you were gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, because you were on the bass, you were trying to learn a lot of uh, of. Chili Pepper songs, man. I know that's Flea, but yeah. Um, I mean, they're that dude's a fucking yeah musical genius. It's it, fucking you can't imitate them. You can just try to fucking. Honestly, dude, it <laughs> kind of seems like Anthony Kiedis is the least talented person of the band, and he's still extremely talented. Yeah, no, yeah, that like, band period is just yeah. so fucking flooded with talent. Like, yeah. Uh, you, I, I have, uh, I found some of their old uh, recordings. You can look up on YouTube uh, from their sessions from when they were doing California Cation. The uh, mm-hmm. when John came back the first time after he's, he left the band, um, he's back with the band now. But yeah, they have such great chemistry as a group, as a band. It's like, man, it's, if any four people belong together, it's those fucking four people. And I'm yeah, sure there's for other sure. bands that have the same kind of thing. Like I'm a big uh, Rage Against the Machine fan. I was just about to say, 
Yeah. Yeah. Huge Rage Against the Machine fan. Good. Um, uh, I like Audio Slave too. Unfortunately, you know Chris Cornell. Fucking also rest away. in peace, man. Damn, it's been it's been a R.I.P. kind of show. Yeah, yeah. Fucking it's rough. Um, <clears throat> like, Mal Rat at uh, fucking Chester Bennington too. Rest in peace, buddy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, you remember when we were in Iraq and uh, we listened to a lot of Rage while we were over there. A lot. I remember yeah. Wild Bill. Our platoon sergeant would bust into my into my room or come over to my bunk. But hey, Johnson, hey, you got any rage? I was like, Roger, that's sergeant. Which album do you want? He's like, give me the first one. The first one was the angriest. Mm-hmm. They had a message and they wanted to get it out there. It was a forty five minute album, and he'd come back about forty five minutes later, amped, dude. Fucking pupils <laughs> just <laughs> popping out of his head. Fucking because you know he 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 drank a lot of coffee too. Um, very caffeinated man, um, and very hyped up on 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 Rage Against the Machine. He'd come back, hey, 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 get your gear on. We're fucking going. We're going hunting. We didn't go on patrols. You remember that? We didn't go on patrols, man. We went on. We, we went, went hunting. hunting. Yeah, yeah, we went hunting. Um, and hunt we did. And uh, yeah, so you remember while we were there though? You remember we were buying like clothing online? Yes. You remember those I bought all kind of shit? Yeah, that you was remember? the dumbest thing ever. That shirt, those shirts we bought with a guy on them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, I still wear mine, I don't give a shit religiously with with, with uh, Che. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Why not? Turns out Che was not a good dude. No, I know he wasn't a good dude, but militarily, you know. <laughs> I know he's I mean, a bad dude. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't great, but I remember I remember being asked by some uh, time I was wearing my fucking Che Guevara shirt, and they were like, "Oh, you like Che? You like Che?" And I said, "Hell yeah, bro!" And they were like, "Thumbs up!" And they started laughing at me. I was like, "All right, I don't know if I made friends or what happened, but then I looked it up, and I was like, "Oh no, no, I'm good." No, I read a bunch of his books when we were in Iraq. Yeah, and yeah, uh, me and Sergeant Baggett actually talk about talked about some of his uh, some of this stuff, and we mm-hmm. both agree like he is a horrible person but but strategically he wasn't he was uh, actually not that bad he had the strategeries strategic strategerastic uh capabilities (laughs) yeah no i remember dude when i when when we met you know and i found out you're from inglewood i automatically assumed that it was fucking nwa Easy E, Tupac, Dre, Snoop. Oh man, you know I, I mean? listen to some DJ Quick still on trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I know you can't, you can't be from there and not listen to it or be familiar with it or in some way support it. But mm. I was absolutely blown away when you said System of a Down, and uh, we went to that, we went to Paris to see System and completely missed the show uh, due to um, not looking at what time the fucking concert started. <laughs> yeah. That was but, uh, it. Was still a fun time though. We, we did get to see him. Paris. Yeah, true. It was fun. We got to see Jim Morrison's grave, um, mm-hmm. which I'm not a big fan of the Doors, but it's always kind of cool to see stuff like that. I guess. Love the Doors. Um, um, yeah, I don't, I don't give a fuck about the Doors or Pink Floyd. You all can hate me if you want to. I'm not a big classical rock kind of dude. Like, like I would way listen to classical rock before I listen to anything out right now. Personally, that's just me. It depends on what's out right now. You know what I mean? Like, uh. I don't know, man. I'm just, I've just never been into it. I mean, don't be wrong. You know, Queen, you can't go wrong with Queen. Um, Metallica, but I wouldn't really call him classical rock. And then Ozzy, right? But like only Ozzy was Zach Wilde. I wasn't a big fan of uh, whatever the fuck his fucking name was. I can't remember now. But I don't know, man. I just like the grittiness of, of hard rock, of metal, man. I just, I, just, I, just, I just dug it. Like that's the kind of music I wanted to play. Mm-hmm. And that's what I listen to, man. When I'm in the gym, like for, on my on my deadlift days, if I want, I tried it with a different, I tried it different with a, ba- a different band. But if I want a good heavy lifting day, I'm listening to Lorna Shore. I tried it with Ginger, the um, the uh, their uh, Ukrainian metal band. The lead singer's a female, amazing vocals, um, amazing band. Really, like they're 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 just good all the way around. But like mm. I tried it with their music and it just didn't hit the same. I put on Lorna Shore and immediately, dude, like I was fucking dialed in. So this is the thing. 
Dude, I would listen to R and B before we go out on fucking patrols. Like yeah. fucking Anita Baker and yeah. like Michael McDonald. <laughs> Just because it was funny to me and it made me chill out and not worry about shit. I could sing along. What I was, suppose you could sing along with like fucking metal, but I don't know. It, it, it just you really can It just made me feel more comfortable. I don't know yeah. why. I get you. What was the first song you listened to when we deployed? The first shit. What do you mean, like into Iraq? Oh fuck! What was the first thing I listened to? It wasn't bombs over Baghdad because everyone else is playing that. And I'm like, it's fucking stupid. No, I'm and everyone was, everyone was playing that because I said so. That was my <laughs> first song in Iraq, "Bombs Over Baghdad" by Outkast, which you got me into, by the way. Outkast, Outkast is dope. You gotta love Outkast. I think the first only shit Andre I... Three Thousand. I'm not a big fan of Big Boy. They're both dope. Well, man, mm. you're ah, they're both awesome. You're tripping. Mm. I I I, I want to say the first shit I played into Iraq was I don't even know. I gotta think about it. Come come back to me. Come back to me. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> next, next, next question. Next question. Next question. Um yeah man. Um I think music was a big deal. Oh especially... it was Eminem. It was Eminem the first oh. shit I played when I crossed over in there was Eminem uh <sighs> I am whatever you say I am. Because it was okay. super mean and aggressive. Yeah for sure. And I'm I like, think... all right. I think for for the crew of us that uh, that hung out uh, around each other the most, music was a big deal. Me, you, uh, Griff, uh, Wild Bill. I mean, a lot of us, like a lot of us, man. Like music was a big deal. You know what was interesting for me is I uh, when we were deployed, when we were at Uvani. I had trouble sleeping at that point because you know you're so amped up all the time, right? Mm. You never know. Like literally, you never know. Like we were living on. Hour or two of sleep here, hour or two of sleep there, um, and so you, your 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 circadian rhythm is all fucked up. Like your sleep cycle is just all over the place, so it's just non-existent. Matter of fact, my shit was so fucked up that when I came home, um, like I just couldn't sleep. I remember one time uh, waking up Tuesday morning and not going to sleep in, until Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, just man. So wide you know, awake the whole time. Five minutes left. Oh yeah, man. Um, but like <laughs> that's how that's how easy it is to talk for two hours. Oh, I know. So we'll have to do a part two or something. Uh, <laughs> down 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 the road, down the road, down the road. Down the road. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, music was a big deal uh, for us. So for me to go to sleep, I I had a playlist of like easy stuff, like 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 a perfect circle and 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 you know some of Tool's lighter songs and. You know, uh, who was that fucking Ben Ben Jack or Ben? Some, I don't know, man. Some dude that fucking saying Jack about, Johnson. Y'all used to listen to that shit. Y'all used to listen, listen to Jack Johnson nah, shit. I was never. I was not a Jack Johnson fan. Easy guy, listening man. shit. I never. I, don't, I can't remember. I can't remember this motherfucker's name. But anyway, that shit would not put me to sleep. It wouldn't. I would lay there and just be anxious. So I would put on. Uh, I would listen to Kitty. I would listen to uh, Zayo. I, um, Pantera. I mean, I would listen to these like this heavy shit and fucking out like a light. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. yeah. I got any? I need something nice and, and chill. Something preferably from the eighties. Mm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I could like relax back then with with the yeah. music. Now I just need something in my ear and I can fall asleep. With just one ear pod and <clears throat> playing something in a... the background and I can drift off. Do you do you have anything that you, you that's a go to? Go to for sleep for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I again, it's more John Prashanti. Yeah. Anything? I think the the Will to Death album is uh really good. I uh, and this may sound weird to some people, but I have this 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 uh. I don't. I don't know how to say it. I don't even know where the fuck they're from. Um, it's not in English. Um, they're um, they're a, a Norse. I want to say they're from Norway. Um, and it's very. And I know there's a big kick right now in America to fucking follow along with like the heathen beliefs or Norse or everybody calls themselves a Viking now. But um, my 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 DNA and my ancestry is actually traced back to that stuff. So it's it's, it's kind of a weird thing for me. Um, I listen. I listen to this music, and I feel like an immediate connection to it. It's an interesting thing how that works. But um, 
It's called Folket Bortafor Nordavinden. Um, and the particular album is called Sagna Mater. I don't know what any of that means. I just know that when I listen to it, they put you I, down. Dude, I zone the fuck out, man. Like, I to a different fucking world. Like, I just am gone. The first song, I'm like just digging it. And then, whew, next thing I know, dude, it's, it's fucking morning time and I had the best sleep. It's wild. You know what, what put me in that kind of feeling when we're in Iraq and I just now remember? It was the lead singer from System of a Downs that album. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That it was. Uh, fuck, I can't remember the name of it, but it was his first solo album that he put out. I want to say, yeah, it had that been in two thousand three, two thousand four, somewhere in there. Awesome. I cannot because it was what like called. Sir Art. Yeah, Sir Art. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've not thought about that in so long. I might try that tonight. Yeah, that was an awesome album. So we got two minutes left, man. Uh, now a word from our sponsors. Yes. Yeah. Do you like hot dogs? Probably because do. Oscar Probably Meyer do. has the wiener for you. For you specifically. For you in your mouth. All up in and around your mouth, as I was uh, say Double G a, would say. In a bun. But, all right, whatever. Or that. Yeah, hey, whatever. thank you all for listening. It's been yeah. fun. You guys got to get, know us a little bit better. Uh, I did suppose they though? There's not a lot of yeah. I think they did a did little they? bit. Yeah, I don't know. We, if uh, if you if got to know us know better, more about us, yeah, than they did before. If you got to know us better, go on over to the Facebook page before I forget, uh, which is what it's called. Uh, not before I actually forget, but before I forget is the Facebook page. Go over on there and uh, and and comment, man. Like uh, mm-hmm. you know. Drop us some shit, or or uh, fucking message us. We'll set up the uh, we'll set up that WhatsApp thing so people can message us if they want to, or whatever. But you know what? Already set up WhatsApp. Okay. Well, it keeps showing up on mine. Is like, uh, hey, set this up, motherfucker. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So you know, ask us some questions on there. Yeah, like, for sure. Like, subscribe, uh, listen, share, share, comment, all that shit. We need all that shit so we can improve. <clears throat> We want to interact, we, and that's the thing. We want this to be different from most podcasts that you hear. Like we want to interact with people that listen. We want your feedback. We want to hear thing, what you have to say. We want questions. We want all of that stuff, man. We want this to be a fucking community, not just us. We yep. want this to be a community. That's what we want. Yep. And on that note, folks, y'all have a good night, and thank you for listening to Before I Forget. Before I Forget. Peace and all that. Salam. So